2018 hearing of the Howard's Conservation Commission. The first item on the agenda is a re request for determination of applicability for 29 Lakeview, a proposal for a septic system upgrade. Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Jason Ellis, uh, representing the Romeos at 29 Lakeview Drive. This property is actually going to be going on the market soon. Um, we conducted a septic inspection here and determined that the existing leach pit is uh, too close to groundwater, so it wouldn't pass a Title V inspection. So we're proposing a new, um, a new leach area and a new D-box for the system. Uh, we'd be leaving the existing septic tank uh, where, it, where it exists now. Um, the new leach area and D box would be located outside the 100 foot buffer zone to the edge of the bordering vegetative wetland at Aunt Edie's Pond. Uh, however, there's some trenching that would need to occur between the septic tank and the D box uh, with a new sewer line that would go in there. Pretty simple project, and, and that's all there is. So. Thank you. Any comments for us, Amy? Um, only that, uh, so I would recommend approval with a negative three determination. I would just recommend that you do not <coughs> confirm any wetland boundaries. Nothing against you, Jason, um, but it's not stamped by PE or PLS. Um, the plan is accurate, but this plan is asking for a septic, um, and I just recommend you don't confirm the wetland lines, and we can put the language to that. So, But as, as presented, I would recommend approval. Okay, thank you. Um, any comments from the commissioners? You want to start, Paula? Yep, I have no comments. Okay, John? No comments. It's pretty close to Nothing. Nothing. No? Yeah, no comments. Ernie? So there's no pump chamber on this? No pump chamber. All gravity okay. fed. Okay, good. The D box is at the end of Leach Field. Correct. A small little square. The, yeah, the current one is actually in the lawn area inside the buffer zone. That would just be abandoned in place, and filled in. New line put in a between new line the septic tank. Yeah, from right from the septic tank to the new D box. Okay. All right. That's fine. Thanks. Okay. Would someone like to make a motion on the project? I'll make a motion to <coughs> approve the. Uh, RDA for Lewis and Brenda Romeo, 29 Lakeview Drive septic upgrade with a negative three determination, determination with the uh, condition that uh, wetland delineation lines are, are uh, not verified. Mm -hmm. so I'll second. Second by Stan. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Um, do you want us to call you when this is ready or just pop in the mail? You can just go to the mail. Be fine. Awesome. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. <coughs> Wait a minute. Gave you the wrong one. Oh, jeez. Give it back. <laughs> Hold it. It was in the uh, it was my fault. It was in the wrong order. That's fine. I'm sure, this one will be fine too. Um, this is 29 Lakeview. I think I should check them out for you. 29 Lakeview. I'll do that from now on. Next on the agenda, we have a request for determination of applicability for 236 South Street, a proposal for fence and plantings. Hi, I'm Mike Lewis, property manager of 236 South Street. Uh, sorry for walking out the last meeting. I want to say that. Since then, Amy has come out we determined where the edges are for the wetlands. Then I made a new plan that shows the 50 foot and 60 foot, and then where the fence would be going. Okay, Amy, any comments for us on this one? Yeah, sure, so 
what we did is I took the site plan that was done um, a few years ago and met with Mike and the owner, Rebecca, who's here um, as well, and just wanted to confirm that the lines that were there a few years ago um, were the same as where they were now. Basically, the two po closest points of the wetlands to where the fence is proposed. So I took into account vegetative cover as well as did soil sampling um, at both locations and found that the plan, to the best of my knowledge and ability, is accurate mm -hmm. within maybe a foot or two. Mm -hmm. So Ron, it is, it is accurate. So um, what is, it is staked out in the field. Um, they would like to have a stockade fence mm -hmm. that you would elevate six to 12 inches um, you are proposing it to the 50-foot line um, and between the zero and the 50-foot um, along the property line, you're also proposing some native plantings. Yeah, the, um, the plantings will go all the way from one end to the other. From the zero to the 50? From the, yeah. well, just the whole entire property line. Okay. I think it's like 120 feet or something. Okay. And then uh, be two rows of the winterberry and sweet pepper. Yep. And then be blueberries behind that. Okay. Those are all applicable species for a somewhat shaded um, upland slash wetland environment. And let me think. So it's not in mapped habitat um, by the state. And with a little discussion about whether we're 50 or 60, um, with, ha with having some discussion about that at the table, I can recommend. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Amy. Any right, comments from the commissioners? Paul, do you no, want to no, no, no comments? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm sorry, could you clarify where? I'm, I'm just looking at the, um, the plan here, and you said plantings. Is that along the fence? When you said from one end to the other, uh, from one end to the other of the fence that you are. Um, yeah, you see the two corners that are inside of the purplish ring mm -hmm. of the property line itself? Yeah. It's going to go from one corner to the other. It's about 100, oh, 141 feet, it says it right there. That's the entire fence line? Yeah, pretty much. Um, except for the zero to fifty, where the fence isn't going. But there would be plantings in the zero. There would to be, yeah, yeah, zero yeah to 50. Right. Correct me if I'm wrong, John. You were asking if between the zero and fifty over here along the property line, if that there's going to be planting here and here. That was my question. Okay. You're, you're answering the question for me. You're saying that's where the planting is. That's what I'm just yep. confirming with you. We'll probably make a note on the plan. Mm. Okay. I did make one with the plantings all in there. It just got really clustered. All right. Well, as long as it's clear, and it's particularly clear for you, Amy, so that. I'm, I'm actually drawing on the plan right now. Okay. I'm also fine with when we get the plants, have Amy come out if she would be willing, and I'll place them wherever she wants them. <coughs> okay. Stan? No questions. Okay. Do you have any questions? Um, yeah, I got a couple comments. Uh, one thing to consider is that, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'd be in favor of this continuing on the entire uh, property line, and that I think think is something that we consider is the the effect that would have on the resource uh, even though it's in the 50 to 100 um, doing the small section probably doesn't have a big effect um, um, well with that we did reach out to a local deer coyote specialist on Cape uh, John way and he said um, I'll make it brief Coyote and deer have large ranges. They can easily adjust their range and travel patterns. Mm -hmm. um, well, fences can restrict some animal movement. It's a great idea as a non-lethal strategy to avoid problems like preventing coyote dog <coughs> interactions. 
So we did reach out to somebody after the last meeting to double check. Yeah, yeah. It, it just, uh, and I, I don't really necessarily see a, an impact of the mm -hmm. 200 feet, but if it was the 1,500 feet, um, that, the, you know, there's a lot of wetlands all around here, and mm -hmm. it would be a, a fragmentation of the habitat. Uh, you know, I think all the plantings are a great idea, and yeah, I, I guess I would prefer to see it outside of the 60. That's that's all my my comments. <coughs> Mike, I don't understand the the concentric circles that are on this map. They're labeled 50 foot and 60 foot, but they go right into the wetlands. I'm not sure what they're if they're truly representative of those parameters. I would from the closest point. There should be a little X there at the. Middle. Well, like I'm looking and at the one. It the shouldn't have continued. It should have just been from the point. Yeah. I'd oh, from a 50 foot yeah. point rather yeah, than going so back into the wetlands themselves. This yeah. shouldn't be. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And a question for you. So you're going to extend the fence with plantings, which I assume your expert said that would be a deterrent for coyotes and dogs and all that sort of thing as well, right? Mm -hmm. Did, it, is there a reason that you didn't want to just use plantings for this whole delineation here? Just to kind of have a physical better barrier. You know, the plantings and stuff aren't going to stop everything from jumping over them. Yeah. And, I mean, even even with the short distance that you've constructed this fence, then, I mean, it really won't serve as a barrier either. I mean, because they'll just go around it and go through the, the plantings that you said are going to be there anyhow, right? It's more of a deterrent than anything to prevent prevent it completely. I mean, they're going to go around it regardless. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think that's going to be your issue. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, all right, yeah, I, I don't have any other questions. Then, uh, sure. Any comments from the audience? No? Should we have any further discussion on um, the options for where the fence is placed? I think Jim expressed some interest in having it at the 60. That's fine with me. Yeah? Yeah. So you would just plant from the 50 to the 60 and then have the fence? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Or, or plant well, from the zero from to the, the zero. 60. Okay. 60. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Are you going to plant into the wetlands? Uh, into the zero to 50, yeah. Not like actually into the wetlands, but. Okay. Because, I mean, those wetlands are not wet. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's, it's sort of yeah. seasonal wetlands, mm -hmm. I think. So, but you're not planning to go into those? No. Time. One of them is completely densely vegetated. The other one is revegetating itself with cattails and yeah. mm. other things. So. Mm. Yeah. I mean, Just could could he plant in the wetlands mm. themselves mm. if he wanted to? Potentially. Some, uh, yeah. Especially on the one to the west, mm. there could be potential for plantings there. Yeah, where the cattails are not. Or yeah, in, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a sparser yeah. down there. Okay, just a uh, thought. Fine by me. Yeah. All right. Well, would that be uh, in the conditions for you to you know, site visits and s supervise yeah, absolutely. the summit? And it would have to be wetland specific plantings if you were to allow, if we were to continue to allow plantings. Just in, in general, as, as we don't have a detailed plan, it'll be important yes. for you to. Um, I'm going to look at his. <coughs> Um, at your at your note, but I'm just it'll it'll state the high bush blueberry, the service uh, not service berry, um, sweet pepper bush, and inkberry. That was it, inkberry that you said or uh, holly, holly. winterberry holly. Yep. <coughs> That'll be in the orders. Okay. <coughs> Would someone like to make a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the RDA for. 236 South Street, fence and plantings with the condition that the fence will be um, from 60 feet or more away from uh, vegetated wetlands with a negative three determination. <coughs> all second. Seconded by John. All those in favor say aye. 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 Not opposed? We will have this out in a few days and we'll call you. Awesome. Thank you. <coughs>
Okay, next we have a request for termination of applicability for 19 Robert Lane proposal for drainage of mitigation for flooding and storage, <coughs> stormwater. Excuse me. Oh, okay. 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 All right. Thank Fine. You. Yep. I wasn't in the office at the end of the day. Oh, okay. so. I just got an email during the afternoon. I said, okay, that's right. Thank you. Good to be here on schedule. Well, we'll keep going. Okay. Like next, we have um, continuance for speaking. Yeah, I've got to announce that. Okay. Next on the agenda, we have a notice of intent for four Shady Drive proposal for new dwelling and appurtenances, and we've had a request to continue this hearing till June 19th. So I move that we do so. Seconded by John. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And next, we have a notice of intent for 522 Pleasant Lake Avenue proposal for a seasonal dock. Um. I told them they probably did not need to come to this one. Remember that the last meeting they had right. said, you know, we flushed out all the questions. We were just waiting to hear from Natural Heritage. Right. Mm -hmm. We did receive a no-take letter that this is not going to have an adverse impact to any state listed species or habitat. Um, so I would recommend that you issue an <coughs> approval for it. Yeah. I had really hoped to have a chance to do the draft orders as well. Um, unfortunately, that did not happen. <laughs> So the draft the you can I would recommend approval tonight with the draft orders in two weeks. Okay. So we've seen this one twice. We've yep. looked at the plans quite a bit. Any additional comments from folks before we vote? No. Okay. Then uh, <coughs> someone like to make a motion on this notice of intent. I'll move that we approve the notice of intent for um, five twenty two Pleasant Lake Ave. Second. Seconded by Jim. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Agenda, Brad, to make it easier? It might be a touch easier. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, at least you have the agenda. Yeah. Here's the Thanks. summary. Thank you. We get you an agenda. I got the summary. <laughs> Okay, next we have a notice of intent for Five Fiddlers Lane installation of a rock revetment. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Charlie Agro with Coastal Engineering. I'm here on behalf of the councilman, the owner of the property. At the last hearing four weeks ago, uh, the suggestions made by the commission were to shorten the length of the revetment so that it didn't extend all the way across the property and that it would end just short or it would end a few feet north of the uh, existing dock on the property. As shown here, the changes were made so the revetment would end approximately 10 to 15 feet north of the existing dock before where it ends it's going to taper into the existing grade the area to the north of the rock revetment will be uh, regraded and revegetated to uh, some some of the uh, points that we had made at the last hearing was the effect of stormwater runoff causing some erosion of the coastal bank so uh, up to down erosion that could be attributing additional sediment into the salt marsh so by regrading out the slope and flattening the area behind the slope, we should address some of those issues. And at this point, I'd be happy to answer any of the questions made by the commission. Thank you. Comments for us, Sammy? 
Um, so Charlie and I had a chance to chat a little bit more today um, about this. One question I have is where does it start? So does it start tapering into the grade literally where you see like the So kind of where the uh, front line would change, it's going to change from one hatch to another. Where it uh, starts to curve in here, it'll start to taper into the slope okay. here. And it's kind of hard to uh, tell necessarily on the plan, but when it's on site there, just because the uh, bank is kind of a strange slope mm -hmm. and it's kind of a tight space there as the contract is working, you know, just so the line that it's shown there will be the end of the rock. Okay. So because a question that we, so backing up a little bit, um, at our last meeting, the commission um, recognized this is a pre-78 dwelling um, and that it is fairly close to the edge of the coastal bank. However, that this is not declared an eroding coastal bank. Um, you know, by CZM, there's no shoreline change or anything to this. And um, on the south side, the erosion is largely because it butts right up to a bulk, a very hard structure, a bulkhead and then continues, the erosion continues to pretty much under the existing um, deck that leads onto the dock. And then you start on the north side getting a bunch of salt marsh, which has actually, for the most part, done a nice job in protecting um, the toe of the slope there. And a lot of the erosion, and it, the little bit of erosion that may be occurring there is also um, not assisted by the fact that the grade at the top is pitching downwards. So, we were discussing on site today, um, and I actually discussed with, I brought Greg Berman, the coastal processes specialist for the county out there when I was going out anyways, just to, again, get a professional's third party um, look at it. And he did agree that um, we, it didn't need to go to the extent that it was proposed before. And that basically at the bend where you say it's going to start going into the grade where you're not really gonna see it anymore, it's gonna go in, is where it should go in correct um, so the plans again it is hard to see on the plan um, so as it goes into the grade is it going to be as it goes into the grade is it still going to be the same height or can you taper it to basically toe stones once you get in there I believe it'll be tapered as it starts to go into the grade again it's going to be uh, kind of somewhat as many however many stones are on the vertical face of the wall is going to be kind of field adjusted mm -hmm. as it goes and the line, the, the northern line will show where no matter how many stones are on the face, that's where the wall will end. Yep. And where it breaks into the grade completely is gonna somewhat vary on the field conditions and exactly how it's uh, regraded right. as well. <sighs> some of the regrading that's done to the north will also serve to, reco to cover some of the rock as well. So I'm just trying to, we're trying to get a grasp on the extent of it because we've, a hybrid approach is what we, um, kind of all I think we're thinking of for this right. one. So if I, I'm going to draw a line and I'd like it, I, I mean, basically it looks like where, where you have rock that extends all the way here, it's about 10 feet of that is going to be exposed potentially north of the, so it's about 20 feet long-ish um, from the dock to where the rock would end roughly. So I'm thinking of it would almost look about half of that you would see, but the other half you wouldn't. I agree with that, yes. So this plan actually mm -hmm. might be helpful. This plan shows rock all the way up here, but in effect, you, this is all gonna be covered. So as here. the original uh, proposal showed that the revetment the whole way across and that the revetment right around that area was gonna be covered from there, through the northern extent of the revetment, so that's about where it would be covered when the with this formative project as well. So it's going to be about a 10 foot taper into the existing grade, gotcha. and then it's going to be the uh, revegetated and regraded slope north of that. Okay. So, okay. So that that is helpful. Um, I mean, our so our concern here is. Um, impacts to salt marsh in particular, mm -hmm. and hard, so hard solutions um, with any wave refraction and also preventing sediment going down into the salt marsh, you could see an adverse impact to that.
but with the reveg with the filling and the revegetation and short line stabilization, pretty much um, parallel to the salt marsh, the impact should be minor. <coughs> Um, and then we did chat a little bit about plantings because the area up here that says edge of lawn, you have a hatched area that is to be native plantings. And can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so the um, plant suggestions that you had sent to us, we reviewed them and we could prepare a, or we could have a plantings prepare, uh, plan re prepared. Uh, we couldn't prepare one on the short notice but we'd like to, if possible, close out the hearing and then submit the planning's plan in however soon that you would need it. That's up to the commission. And that would be in working right alongside with you and- uh, Potentially it could be, if this were to get approved tonight, it could be prior to next hearing when we would do our orders and conditions. And the plan, we, all the uh, plan things that we'd use would be based on the list that you had uh, sent us. And I'd also like some time to review with the councilmen, just, you know, certain plans are gonna grow a little bit higher. Where would you want the privacy? Where would you like a shorter plan for your view? And what would work better in a certain situation? I would review that with uh, you. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't do that in the short one that we have. Oh, that's fine. I, and it was, I only noticed today um, that the plan had just said, you know, at native planting air or native plant area. And um, so I, you know, talked to Charlie about that. So we only knew today that we wanted something a little bit more specific on that. I did speak with uh, Catherine Ricks, another engineer in our company, and she did a uh, project uh, very close to this one. So it'd be a plant, oh, plant very, uh, yes. <laughs> I didn't get a chance before the meeting to review, but yeah. So it'd be a very similar project to that one that I believe was recently approved as well. Okay. I don't have, have any other questions. As long as we can kind of nail down where we're gonna have the transition, um, I think that's the critical piece. And I think it should, to, for the clarity of the contractor, if you approve this, we need to give a approximate distance from the dock. And for the uh, construction plan set here, we can uh, move that note to more better distinguish where that is gonna be. And we can even set a grade stake at that yes. location as well and point that out. Because again, it's kind of a, uh, you know, very tight, very, you mm -hmm. know, narrow little area there. Mm -hmm. I don't have any other questions. Thanks, Amy. Paul, any, any Yeah, questions? I just, just so that I can cement it in my brain, there is a large bush. Yes. Standing. Is the revetment going to go under that existing bush? So that's where it would kind of terminate, down. and that's where it would be completely within the grade, okay. and it would probably start fading into the grade a little bit south of the bush, okay. and then it would cease at the uh, other side of the bush. Okay, thank you. And that's what we used, me and Amy had met on yeah. site a day or so after the hearing, and we measured off to the bush, and we figured that's about where a good ending point would be. Mm -hmm. Fine, thank you. That's it, John? Just continuing on the same point, that bush appears to be one, maybe two, either large beech plums or other form of cherry. It's a cherry. So, so um, are you taking that out? Is that, I, and I'm not sure it's just one plant. I was looking I under there know. today and it's trying to figure dense. out. It's it, very nice, yeah, and why, I mean, dense. I. Yeah, I said it's very dense, it's, it's hard very to dense. tell. It's very nice <laughs> if too. If it's one or two. So I'm not a plant specialist, but if it's determined to be a good native species plant and it's uh, worthwhile saving, it can be incorporated into the uh, buffer strip because the buffer strip would be going right through that area as it is so oh, but it that, that, that thing is down the bank and if it, it may can't be saved i would recommend replanting it along the top of the slope maybe a little bit to the north i think it's going to be a hard time to save it because the the root mass is going to be very disturbed <laughs> now you mean save it. it in place but it could be replanted somewhere else well that's i i just don't think you're going to it's going to live i it, see if you try to transplant it. No, if you keep it where it oh, is, trying to put the rocks in. Um, I think it will interfere. But if we can always say, try to keep it in place and save it. And if not, move it. Move it to the north. I'm done. You're done? Again, on that same area, I don't understand looking at it. It seems the problem with the bank start 
stops right at the end of the dock. So why do you have to go that far with the revetment? So just to give it a little bit more stability there, and the, the bank in that area, it is covered with grass right now. Uh, I've been told by the councilmen who have spoke to some of our neighbors who are, I believe some of them may be in attendance today as well, but in the past there has been erosion in this area and it's uh, well manicured now to maybe cover up some of that erosion, but we have to go underneath the dock and continue it a little bit just to give it a little bit more stability to hold up the, the give the bank itself a little bit more stability as it bulges out in this area. Now the salt marsh exists about five feet north of the, uh, the deck here and that's right in the area of where it's gonna be tapering into the existing grade and be covered up. <clears throat> if that answers your question. Well, I, I hear your answer. I just, from my appearance, it looked like you could probably go half the distance from from the deck beyond that. I think the uh, the bush eroding in is also or falling in is a pretty good side of sign of erosion. The bush is being undermined, and that's why it's falling into the bank in the first place. I think five, ten years ago, the bush was probably healthy and doing well so the fact that the bush is starting to lean and falling in is a sign that the bank has eroded okay i have nothing else jim um yeah so it looks like it, it scales from the dock 30 feet to the north on the plan i have here Seems a little bit. Which is I have one. just under 20. This is a one inch is 10 plan. I, I don't, I, yeah, but I don't think it, the, uh, it was printed to scale. Hey, Amy, you mind if oh. I borrow it? Yeah. Sure, of <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> yeah, yeah, scale I right did there it on the north plate. of the jog the and then jogged in. Of, yeah. Really? It's just I about 20. I didn't get that. Yeah, so it's a one on 20. 35 it should feet. be printed to scale. The plan oh. should be to scale. Oh, maybe I'm mistaken. Yeah, it's a one on ten, so I'm oh, scaling about, right. about 22 one. feet, 21, oh. 22 feet. I'm seeing it now, yeah. Right, sorry. Right. I forgot you guys were on reduced. I apologize. Yeah, it's a little hard to, hard to sell. Okay. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I, I think uh, we all thought that the, the problem was mainly to the south of the dock. Um, I'd just like to see a clear a delineation of where it's going to be covered and planted uh, if it's you know it seems like it'd be nice to start that almost at the dock and <coughs> cover it you know so the salt marsh could get it uh, so to, the finish line we determined out in the field that day we kind of used the again we used the, the bush as our you know quote unquote line and after speaking a little bit more with Amy today and uh, you know, thinking about it some more, you know, uh, we could, where she just drew the line on the plan, I believe you said it's about 10 feet north of the dock there. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we can try to work that into grade a little bit sooner as well and, you know, continue it north. And, I mean, I think they would, there's no uh, adverse effect to covering it anyway. So I think we can maybe even use the marsh line and try to cover it as best as we can at the line of the marsh where possible yeah. to work into the bank. Again, it's a, a, a difficult site to work out, you know, beforehand, especially trying to deal with the uh, hybrid revetment here. It's not like, you know, you're, we got a standard coastal bank where it's a very gradual slope, very steep slope, the revetment goes here, mm -hmm. you know, trying to work with it in this site. There's going to be, you know, a couple minor tweaks out in the field there. But where we draw the line of where we start the taper, we could set a stake at that point and we could, for the construction set of plans or even a set of plans, I could send you tomorrow, I can move this arrow mm. down to this point right here and just say, you know, I taper into existing grade at this point mm -hmm. where at the, and the rock revetment would end right here where this would be uh, covered and regraded. Isn't that what I just said to ask? The same thing? I guess so, yes. <laughs> yeah. Both just agreed. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, if it's, uh, if it's essentially covered and planted and tapered from the dock to that 23 feet, I would I'd yeah. be in favor of that. And, uh, it may be, a, just to be completely honest, <clears throat> you can see that the basically the mean high water, that right underneath the dock where the rock would be 
is getting closer to the mean high water line as opposed to farther north um, where the great where it goes in you have a little bit more of a beach area so it might be just to be honest it might be a little bit more challenging to keep that covered at all times mm -hmm. so you just you may see a little bit of exposed rock just to the north of the dock mm -hmm. from time to time because it's it's definitely on the moon high tides it's going to be up to that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the the existing conditions didn't see much erosion there, though. No. Either. So th it seems like the but planting the is going to actually yeah. hold up. The that was area. Area. Um, my, my other comment is that in the in the replanted area to the north, um, it's getting it's getting regraded and planted. I think there are some shrubs there existing, mm -hmm. but a, a beach plumber, high tide bush or mm -hmm. like that. So it'd be good to see those re replanted and in, in yep. kind. And I'm sure the councilmen would like to reuse whatever they could on site. And I, I guess to the south, is that uh, rose hips or something? Uh, the south side is on the banking itself. There's a few Rogoza rose up there, which we kind of consider invasive now. Yeah. Um, but pretty much other than the, you're removing one tree there because it's leaning oh, over. Right. But the rest of that stuff is pretty invasive. All invasive anyway. So you'd be replanting right. that whole slope. <coughs> yeah, I would like to see a, a planting plan yeah. of the buffer strip and of the replanted area yep. with, with shrubs. Uh, okay. That's all I have. Is that a comment, sir? Yeah, I pretty much agree with what, what uh, Jim Estano said. There, there is a timber in the bank between the bush that we've been talking about mm -hmm. and where I think it, we, we would like to see it graded in. So if you if you look for that timber, I think that's pretty right. much where we decided. Right after the dock, so kind of where. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. like five feet from the from the edge of the dock. Yeah, I've noticed that on site, and I guess the uh, previous owner, I was informed after the last meeting, the previous owner used to kind of put whatever he could out there to prevent erosion where he could. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's yeah. that mm -hmm. would probably be the best way to handle that. I, I my concern is salt marsh, and and I would hate to see you going anywhere inside of the the salt marsh which would be to the north there so um, so long as you terminate it south of that that would be fine um, w did we also have some concerns about fertilization and that sort of thing that we wanted to add into our conditions here I would say so I don't um, so now our, our regulations and we're gonna be chatting a little bit more about it tonight at the end of the night hopefully um, <laughs> condition about I mean they have existing irrigation it's been there a long time but um, the fertilization now that this is in front of us um, I think the Commission is most likely going to condition that it stop uh, you will inform them so it's a pretty rush lawn and uh, a lot of nitrogen flowing off of that into the into the harbor there which is doing nobody any good uh, I say I've only been there in the uh, winter when the lawn wasn't really in full bloom but uh. yeah uh, I have no other comments. That's all? Okay. This all sounds really good to me. I guess my concern is that we don't have really a great description of what's going to be done here right. tonight. So, uh, for example, the hybrid plan, is that presented anywhere in the present plans? Yes. So uh, this area here is going to be the area of uh, revegetation and regrading. And we uh, showed the uh, proposed profile here, what the proposed profile would look like, the uh, buffer strip, and the uh, planting on the slope and the plantings will be specified on a plantings plan which again I can send them have a plantings plan drafted up and sent over to Amy in the next few couple few weeks with a, an adjustment to this note here to show tapering into grade a little bit sooner meanwhile the rock m may continue into the bank but so at it's covered starting at this point just about five feet or so north of the dock so where the marshes exists, it would be inside the bank. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not particularly it's comfortable. Up, it's up to you if you want. Yeah. I, under, I understand. Um, I would like to see the county report. I've come to depend on the county's, you know, comments on these type of projects. And yeah, I think I we all. I he was here talking to me about something else. We had a little extra time, mm -hmm. and I just said, "Hey, can you give me your two cents on this?" Did he write a written report? He did not. Oh, he did not. Okay. All right. Um, and did we request an alternatives analysis, and did we receive that? It was in the first packet. It was. Yep. Okay. 
how do folks feel? Um, it, it's, it's a plan that will need some adjustment um, to show the exact footprint. Well, I, I agree because we're, we're kind of depending on, we don't know what, how it's going to end up it, at this be, point. It'd be unusual, I think, um, for a project like this to vote, although I think you can have some assurance that we don't really have any um, outstanding issues. But at the same we time, we couldn't close it. I mean, we, the orders wouldn't have been done till next week anyway, or till next meeting anyway. So the permit wouldn't have been out. So, what I can do is <coughs> we can continue to the next meeting, get the plans, and then maybe even if, if everything looks good, you could probably even do the orders that night. So it's not going to add any more time to the to the project. When do you seek to go to construction? I think sometime this fall. This fall, okay. So, in that case, more planting details as well, because there really aren't any here. Mm -hmm. I think we've had good discussion. I think we're all heading in the right place, but I think it would be a little unusual for us to, to vote on the plan, not modified in that way, and, and to, to see the final footprint would be. No, I believe just so while we're all talking about this, I believe this is going to be the final footprint. The difference as far as the uh, revetment itself goes is going to be the, ta this, the beginning of the taper of the revetment. Mm -hmm. And it's really just going to be a matter of moving this arrow to here. Right. And, and as far as a plantings plan goes, <laughs> with a plantings report that could be submitted, uh, kind of auxiliary to this, just with the overall area and a description of what would be planted based on your suggestions. Mm -hmm suffice usually we would see um yeah. at least a table on the plan that said okay this is you know call the area north of the dock area a and south of the dock area b and you'd say <coughs> how many what type et cetera, are going to be planted in each area okay is june 19th okay uh yes it would be i believe uh, if there's anybody in the audience so, uh, they said a couple of our neighbors may be here to speak on their behalf okay. as well all right thank you any any comments from the audience please identify yourself wish to talk or is it on no, it's on okay good uh good evening i'm tom morris and uh i live at four fiddler's landing and we've lived there for 16 years uh we would be in favor of this project um we've worked with amy before <laughs> and uh still continue to uh, keep our front as natural as possible um, and but ha I have a couple questions uh, having lived there for 16 years when Al Fromm put in his seawall uh, that's really when uh, the erosion started and that leads to my other question is uh, unintended consequences which is what this is a result of is a uh, question if we do this and I start to get erosion who is going to pay for my remediation? So can I answer? Sure. So a project should be designed. So one of the things that we do look at it and is, is to make sure that a project, to the best of our knowledge, is not going to have an adverse impact to, to abutting properties. If the rocks were to go at, all the way up to your property line, there would certainly be a, a va very valid concern. Um, this, there's no guarantees. I can never say there's any guarantees. But um, tapering it well before your property line, bearing it into the grade, and then covering it, and most likely having a benchmark set up saying that it needs to stay covered um, would help prevent um, what we call end scour or um, additional erosion on that end. Okay. So. And to speak more to that as well, the project being a hybrid revetment, since the area to the north closer to your property is designed to maintain the natural slope as much as possible, and the revetment tapering in as far away from your property as possible into the existing grade, and where it tapers into the existing grade, maintaining the slope over it and the cover over it, it doesn't change the site conditions. Okay. Whereas if you have put rocks right out in front on the existing or above the existing grade, moving further out, it could change the uh, wave interaction with the coastline. Okay. Is, is there a recourse I would have if, it, in fact, those didn't work? 
So, I mean, it would be a civil matter. Okay. Not a matter for, for, for this board. Um, okay. But Super. We would support it. Okay. Quick question for you. Yes. When did the uh, revetment go in, or the, the bulkhead go in uh, to the south? Ooh, probably 20 years ago. 20 years ago. At least. Yeah, 1998, I believe. Oh, wow. So it was about 10 years. Yeah. And uh, it was amazing how it, how, how it causes that. Right. We have the same thing going on now at the end of our harbor, yep. uh, the big rock wall. Now we have to uh, dredge very often, mm -hmm. and the poor taxpayer now has to pay for that. So that's why my question about unintended consequences. <laughs> okay. And very abruptly, like, yeah. um, which that wall does. It comes in at a 90-degree angle. Um, and things that are hard, hard structures, and very abruptly. Very and, tough. And it's um, <laughs> like something like that would not have been approved as it is now today. Right. Good. Glad to hear yeah. that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Bob Curry, Six Fiddlers Landing, directly across the street from Councilman's. Just a comment on the, the backyard. In the late 90s and the year, uh, early 2000s, I used to mow the lawn for the gentleman uh, who lived there. I could just run across the street and run my lawn tractor around. And I could drive all the way around the back of the house um, between the patio and the, uh, and the water. And probably 2010, 2012 in that area, the, the level had changed. The, all of a sudden, the, the, uh, the land was leaning towards the, um, towards the hub to the point that I felt that it was unsafe to drive the lawn tractor around there. So. Obviously, something was eroding the uh, the land under it, and my concern was that end up in the drink. Thank you. You will. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah, I just have one more question. When you said you're going to start that, I guess the curve sooner, but you thought that the end of the revetment would stay the same length. Why? How would that? So I would th I would think that would cause it to be a little shorter, if you're starting the, the bend sooner. So if we start even if we start the bend sooner, uh, and come into the grade here, we'd still end the revetment right around where the uh, bushes is, like the uh, gentleman just said. The the uh, area in this the the bank in this area is very steep and it runs right down that a rock into the grade and then covered back up would help support that as it may erode over time. This again, I think that bush is a good sign of erosion. I think the uh, lawn being pretty well manicured over time and possibly fertilized, I don't know, I'm not a lawn guy, uh, <clears throat> is why it doesn't look like it's eroded. But I think that bush being you know, undermined and leaning over is a pretty good indication that there is erosion going on in the coastal bank. Another comment from the audience? I'd be totally in favor of a nitrogen ban. <laughs> Good to hear. I actually have one other question, if, yeah. if you're done, which is um, clear, clearly the dock or part of the dock under where you're working is going to need to be disassembled. That's correct. Are there changes contemplated once it's put back together in the structure, that structure itself? There are some possible changes that we've uh, thought about as well, and I think we would bring that up at a uh, pre-construction meeting. We're not, they're not 100% sure how they want to have that. Uh, so I think I brought it up in the previous meeting that some of this dock will need to be removed temporarily during construction and would either be rebuilt in kind or potentially, potentially modified and... Uh, There are pilings there as well. Are they going to have to come out right? There are pilings right in the Yeah, area. so those pilings so right the in the pilings area. are going to come out, so there's going to be major disturbance there. But then... It would have to come back, I would say, um, either as a change in plan or potentially if it was to be rebuilt in a different design, um, maybe as an amendment. But we, I, without knowing right. now, I don't know which. But I think there should be... A I think that is going to be part of the verifying the field up to the contractor how the best way to re remove it to build the rock and then reconstruct it but there are yes there are two posts at the toe of the slope right. that 
regardless if you're just going to rebuild it in kind or change it a little bit, like make it a little higher so it goes over, um, you'd have to redo. So You can't get equipment in there to remove those pilings, though. <laughs> yes, so the top, no. they could remove them from this. So this, the entire coastal bank is going to be uh, regraded and resloped, and there's, they're going to have to, you know, there's going to be some excavation involved with some temporary stockpiling to make room for equipment as it comes <coughs> in to place the uh, stones and even to regrade this area as well. So, But you won't be going on to the marsh at all? No, we would not be going on to the marsh, and at the pre-construction meeting we can determine if uh, a silt fence or a, another alternative to a silt fence would be, uh, could be implemented along the uh, high timeline just to make sure that no mm -hmm. Debris from the excavation, or not debris, no excess sediment from the uh, excavation would flow into the salt marsh, right. which we had done in a previous site in Chatham at Eastward Hall. We had just used a silt fence lawn area that was close to a proposed rock amendment that worked pretty well. Right. So, will you have those answers regarding the dock for the next meeting? Probably not, because the councilmen's are not sure exactly how they want. It. It's not the area that goes over to rock revetment that may be modified it's more so the area in here which uh it, honestly the area that goes over where the lawn would be raised that might oh. be replaced with a i mean it's basically Platform. a walkway on the ground okay. and again they're not 100 percent sure how they'd want that to be reconstructed and i think part of how that is reconstructed after the construction is going to be kind of up to the construct cut the contractors means oh. and methods that i think we can discuss at the uh pre-construction meeting yeah but we may want, need to see it as a change, an official change in plan, if to how it's going to be reconstructed. So right now, it's, it's we're proposing to reconstruct the in kind as exactly. Is. So if that changes, right, yeah. right, then they'd have to come right. back here before they can put it back together mm -hmm. if they change it in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, briefly on the benchmarks, we've talked about. It'll be a condition to have benchmarks. Does it make sense to try to get the elevations in the plans you come back to us in two weeks, or is that better for the as built? No, as far as a benchmark, are you talking about just a uh, beach grade benchmark? or? I'm thinking of a benchmark on the stones, the southern end near the property line, and then a second benchmark when the stones go under. More like if it's, yeah, if, the, if at this point it's exposed, then it I needs see. to be covered again. And planted. Maybe we could put a drill hole in one of the rocks or something along those lines. Right. I'm just wondering though, when do you think the best time to ask for that? In these plans coming back to us or in the as builds? Um, yeah, actually, I would say before. Before, yeah. So is that something you can do in two weeks? Um, just matching an elevation to the top of the stones and in, in the, the design, just the mark where it's going to go. Is that on the profile itself here? Yeah. Yeah. I just think the only difficult part of that is we show this typical detail. It never gets, you know, these star angular stones that are very diff difficult to set exactly as it's shown there. Right. So when we've done this on projects, the contractor has uh, built the revetment, yep. and wherever that uh, toe stone or whatever rock that kind of works that's right at the existing grade, we have a drill hole set there, and then we can, you know, write down the elevation maybe on an as-built plan. Okay. Okay, so it'll be a condition, mm -hmm. and then the ASBIT will need to have those okay. elevations precisely surveyed in. Right. Is that reasonable having two benchmarks? Yep. North and south? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> well, if we're all set, then I, I guess I motion that we continue the hearing for Five Fiddlers Landing until June 19th. Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Seconded that. Um, who seconded that? Was Stan? I did. Stan did. I know it's all taped, but I like to have my notes anyway. Yep. Okay, next we have a notice of intent for 64 Deep Hole Road, a proposed addition. Just, uh, 
um, so we don't get confused. Can the change to them? Sure. Okay, thank you. Good evening, for the record. C.V. Cavallo from Farland Corp. Also with me is the applicant and owner, Jason Frybush. Uh, before I present, I just want to make a quick note that we revised this plan here only to um, clarify the surface uh, here. A uh, previous plan called for a gravel parking area. It's actually a crushed uh, seashell area, um, just to kind of clarify. Um, so basically, the project consists of a proposed addition of 410 square feet. Um, 326 of that square feet is actually over an existing deck, <coughs> which is going to be removed as part of this addition. So that leaves us with about 84 square feet of hardscape. Um, and to mitigate that, we're providing a um, area here of 170 square feet. We picked this area here because it's actually the thinnest area to the bordering vegetative wetland. So we've put the uh, mitigation area to kind of provide more of a buffer um, to the bordering vegetative wetland. The proposed addition is 61.3 feet from the delineated wetland. Um, that's pretty much the scope of the project. Thank you. Any comments, Amy? Yep. So if you recall, this came to us first um, several months ago, and we did learn that um, there are two wetlands that are connected by an intermittent stream in the back of the property. And so they, they re-delineated the wetland, found that out. And the project changed a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So now what they're proposing is less than I, than I believe before. Um, the addition, as they stated, would be for somewhat over the existing um, permitted deck and are in, in replacement of and um, at its closest 61.3 feet away. It is, besides deck, it is just um, lawn area there. There's no um, major vegetation that needs to come out to put the deck in. It does look like you're changing very slightly the grades in that area as mm -hmm. well, so that's very slight. Um, the difference, um, so there are 84, there's an 84 square foot <coughs> addition to hardscape in the 50 to 100. So their mitigation um, would be a two to one, which they have done with 170 square feet of plantings. Uh, I agree that the plants that you have picked would be well suited for this area. Um, prior to, and apologize, it was just prior to the meeting, we like to starting to try to look at properties and make sure that everything on the site is is, is properly permitted. So we did find a couple of minor things. Um, noted it to the commission on site today. Um, underneath the existing deck, there is an outdoor shower. There is a paver walkway. And then, so the shower is just at the 100 foot buffer zone line. The paver, no, sorry, the 50. But it is under existing, the stairs in the deck. A paver walkway, it's bricks, it is pervious, and a shell parking area, which previously, if you look on Google Earth, was lawn. Um, so it did, um, we can chat a little bit about it, but it seemed like these were fairly benign things. And maybe we just conditioned that the shell parking area, although it is close to the wetland, it's kind of replacing grass, that it not become paved in the future. Um, and then also the shower um, potentially have some sort of drainage, uh, better drainage underneath that. So either you know, six inches of stone or a small dry well, um, something like that. Yeah, there's just, it usually just, there's sand if it just right. disappears. Right. There's never been any. Yeah, it didn't look like much erosion down there. <laughs> but it's just typically when we have an outdoor shower, we do try to at least make it infiltrate immediately. So, okay. um, so with that, I don't have any other questions. And Amy, has there been a change of ownership since 2013? You know, I didn't, I didn't look. How long have you owned it, sir? Oh, God, time flies. I'm trying to calculate it from when my daughter was three out of four. Um, it's probably been around seven years. Mm -hmm. So right and around then. We, right we had, you know, it was all lawn area and for extra parking. It's really narrow up 
people would just pull mm -hmm. onto that grass area and then landscaper guy say you, they're killing your grass. I can I have a guy with some shells and then he said, by the way, do you want a walkway? Yeah. And that, that's pretty much, I didn't right. realize that was a permitting thing or anything like that. And again, is that the zero to 50 or 50 to 100 where the shells are? Some of the shell is in the zero to 50. Actually, sorry. Yeah. All of the shells in the zero to 50. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's a problem, you know, I always worry someone's going to pop a tire on the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing all this. I could scrape it out. I could put pea stone. I could try putting some grass back there. Mm -hmm. There was nothing. There was no cement or anything below it. I just think he put yeah. whatever crushed up and just the shells. Yeah. All right. Well, then I, I think we should probably just discuss um, these things and uh, consider, you know, that that in the zero to 50 is something we would want to have seen come before us at the time. I have no idea. I didn't even know that it was even close to. I mean, until the other, until the we looked at, um, they were just a, they, they knew there was wetlands on either side, but that stream <coughs> had not been shown on any plan prior as part of the wetland. Mm -hmm. So back when you did it, you probably didn't even know you were in a buffer zone. I, I thought it was always bone dry. I knew that there was somewhere back Itch, there a yeah. cranberry bottom and, and, you know, just that was abandoned long ago, so had no real notion of one way or the other. And this was just sort of a way mm -hmm. to keep the lawn from getting, you know, muddy and whatever and chewed up. But yeah, I would say the two avenues are to modify it to be a little more environmentally friendly or um, add to the, the planting area as, as mitigation. Th those are the two things that come to mind. Um, but let's discuss them. Uh, excuse me, guys, is, um, just to even know, I, mean, I, I guess it's the permeability is the issue of the shells. Is there anything per better? Permeability in, in, in active shells? As Same well as there. activity in the zero to 50. It, it is a no disturb zone, so that it's the two things. Um, zero to 50 is a no disturb zone. Any comments, Paul? No, um, where the uh, crushed shells are yeah. now is where it shows on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was grass and weeds and whatever mm -hmm. you know lawn I had over there. It was just when was the house there. originally constructed? Do we know? I think it's '84. '84. Sorry, Paul. That's okay. okay. No, that's that was my only question. I just wish I had more answers for you. A lot of this was I got the email on the way no this morning and yeah, John. I don't have any questions. Mm -hmm. No questions. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think with, with a little bit more uh, planting to make up for the gravel or the, the shell, uh, it seems like it's something you use that makes sense. I, I'm happy to also collaborate in terms of at some point if the footprint's in there, adding some more of the local species or something and yep. keep wrapping it around, I, I have no yeah. problem. Mm -hmm. It's whatever I can get to grow. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it's good. It's dry. Yeah, it looks like you have a good mix of species and if... Uh, if that maybe wrapped around to the to the east, um, where their straw water limit of work is. Yes, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. That, that will, uh, I'm happy to try. I've tried, you know, putting in, you know, rose bushes and things over the time along there. Mm -hmm. it, it's it gets dry. We don't have irrigation or anything like that. I, mm. Sadly, it is very natural. It's not a lot it, it gets a lot of sun as well. It, it, it gets sun, but it also just it gets. It gets hot. And I didn't mind people driving on my parking on my driveway because, mm -hmm. like a lot of people, come yeah. come July or August, it's pretty hard. Right. And, you know, Amy it's might be able to work with you. Like uh, species like sweet fern will grow yeah. in that real dry. There are certain species, species that that will do fine there. And it's, and there's some very um, um, just because I'm just want to make sure we're talking about. If you're saying this area, there's some huge high trees and things in here, so it also gets the shade. Well, that, yeah. What will grow, but yeah, there, there's there's an uh, understory that will grow in uh, both of those conditions. Really, yeah, Amy's been so. there and has some suggestions. Yeah. I'm, I'm oh, happy to work with you guys. There too. And it's one of those things that for the first two growing seasons, you may need to do like a temporary um, above ground drip irrigation, basically perforated hose. Um, but on the spring with a timer or something from below. Something the temporary because no matter what it is, even if it's drought tolerant, it's going to need. Little Water care for a couple seasons. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. Yeah. So, but, but yes, I'm happy to um, add on to with that. With something along the lines of 50.
extent of what is there added. Uh, okay, so if that's like 170 square feet that they're proposing now, that would be six. Yeah. Can I get rid of the gravel and just put that grass there? Would that be simpler? Because I just, I want to make sure that something grows. I don't know. Well, there is the, the, the paver uh, as well and the, you know, if you're using it as parking, the, the shell actually is probably pretty appropriate, you know, rather than just having eroding, uh, you know, dirt. It doesn't get a lot of parking. It's just when my wife needs to get out for work before me and we need one yeah. the garage. It's just, it's how <coughs> you move a car away to get through a very tight mm -hmm. driveway out. It's sort of down a slope. Um, and then my only other comment was to, um, Put on a condition of uh, no fertilizers or chemicals, which we're doing on, on the lawns, which we're doing on pretty much all the properties now, all the projects. Um, okay. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Marty? No. So we're talking about the square footage of the shell driveway mm -hmm. to convert to plantings. Is that you, you would like to keep that the parking area? I don't really care. I'd okay. rather just put grass down and you know right. not I, I'm not a, averse to plantings at some point I've always felt once the footprint I, I've been in the house since 80 uh, about 78 years since 84 there were the original landscaping and I always wanted to you know maybe put irrigation at some point but I didn't know what the footprint would be and I didn't want to have to tear it up mm -hmm. but I'm not averse to the plantings I just it's hard to see where they would thrive and, oh, and yeah, we also know. wouldn't allow uh, irrigation in that area. Uh, not permanent the, underground not, irrigation. Not permanent, yeah. Oh, I can't put a permanent on the on the lawn? No. Yeah, why is that? Because it's within the... It tends to, well, a lot of times irrigation um, leads to fertilization. <coughs> it also, um, sometimes things are going off in at inappropriate times. Uh, a lot of times irrigation systems, like another project that we saw tonight actually contribute to erosion. Um, so it can be permitted on as, as requested basis potentially, but for the most part the commission is um, not permitting new irrigation within the 100 foot buffer zone. So even the front lawn can I have irrigation or is that? Where your 100 foot buffer zone is. <coughs> I, I guess I think we're more uh, Foot with irrigation. It's oh, okay. really, yeah, okay, zero sorry. to 50. We've, yeah. I, I think so we haven't allowed it in a long time. A front yard 50 to 100 would be, I think, it's a different consideration. Okay. Right. Sorry, maybe I'm thinking so of the front. Right. Right. So if I limit it into the front, just because I feel bad that I have the yeah. uh, old my neighbors <laughs> seem to have green lawns and I have this thing that uh, it's okay if you don't. You would yeah. still need. It's, it, it makes the mowing a lot easier, I'll tell you that. You would much. still need some sort of an approval to have it in the 50 to 100. You can't just install it. It would still need at least administrative approval through our department. Would, and would that be okay if I want to put drip for just uh, plantings? Is that yes. not a different? Is that's that different? different? I think you, So you if we change essential. over the legacy stuff that's been mangled over the years in front of the house and put a drip or something, that's different than keeping the lawn. I'm okay with that. Okay. The, the fertilizer uh, restriction would be on the entire 100. 100 foot, so there's very little of the property that would be outside of that. So, I, you know, everyone doesn't need a bright green lawn. I'm right. Like well, that. there's lawn mixes that work out pretty well. Um, yep. Um, I'm okay with it. I just want to be able to keep it. If I plant some new shrubs and stuff, I want to be able to keep them from dying mm -hmm. when I'm not here. Well, I'm happy to talk to you. So. <laughs> okay. I'm a so, what, is your preference to keep using that? shell space for parking as grass or just abandoned parking there altogether? I could put grass there. It's once in a while we pull a car up so that if we know someone's getting out in the morning or we have extra people and, you know, yeah. and just out of consideration not leaving someone parked on the lawn in front of my house, you know, for other people. It's right. a, you know, people start bombing down towards uh, Red River down that street and I just, you know, get nervous if people park along there. And it's just, it's sort of a, very tight. Sure. Um, I think I understand why some people may want to have it brought back to lawn and to be, or grass because that's at least vegetation and not any type of um, disturbance, I guess, if you will. Um, however, I do think the property could benefit. I think uh, the shell that it, you have there, it's it's fairly um, 
I mean, it's not doing any harm, and it is providing decent drainage. So I think the idea of additional plantings, and I'm happy to meet on site, um, additional plantings in appropriate places to offset that might better serve the resource area and the habitat, because they actually have a lot of open space in the back there. To the other side, I'm thinking if we continue there, I think and they will probably do better. And again, as yeah. you said, with the watering, I'm just, I'm happy to get anything <coughs> going. I just want to keep it yep. alive and yep. not spend the money and the time to plant stuff that, mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't make it through the, through the summer. So I think that would be more beneficial than having him remove the shell just to put that Cape Cod grass yeah. in this case. And just put the condition on it that it's not to become, you know, hardening or um, asphalt. So. Fine with that. I, I would agree. And uh, would it be practical to have the, a one-to-one -one footprint? I think so. Planting And I think that's easily accomplished along the edge. Okay. Can, I, can we... Um, can I submit it after, you know, yes. the order just so we can? Yep. Yeah. I'm I trying to so. do it over the summer if I can. Any comments from the audience? No? Any further comments from the commissioners? Do we have a motion? <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve the notice of intent for 64 Deep Hole Road for an addition with the condition of additional mitigation plantings to match the footprint of the gravel of the shell driveway and uh, a restriction in perpetuity that uh, restricts any chemical use or fertilizer use on the lawn. <coughs> Just second Seconded by Stan. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Chair, our representative for 19, Robert, is here. If you want to take that now sure. or put it at the end. No, I, I think they'd probably like to go now. Okay. So we're going to revisit a request for termination of applicability for 19, Robert Lane, drainage for mitigation of flooding and stormwater. For the record, I'm John O'Reilly. Uh, with me to my left is Dave Abel. He's with the Community Development Partnership. Uh, we're here tonight to hopefully receive a, re uh, a negative RDA decision from you folks. Um, the Community Development Partnership owns number 17 and 19 Robert Lane. And recently, within the last couple of years, with our heavy rain events, that we've been experiencing in the area. They've experienced significant flooding at the end of Roberts Lane um, to the point that they had water in the basement, number 19 Roberts Lane. And <clears throat> we feel that uh, what we're trying to do here is to address the surface drainage uh, through a series of subsurface leaching facilities and catchment areas uh, but we're also uh, looking to uh, berm up the end of Roberts Road, uh, Robert, R Robert Lane, excuse me, um, which we are looking to block whatever flood waters or, or rain waters or storm waters that are coming from the northern, northern properties off site. So the entire area is within the floodplain, 100-year uh, floodplain, so that is our resource. There is some, a very small area at the end of Robert Lane that does have some hydric soil conditions and some aquatic uh, wetland plants, um, but the area is, is on the small side. I think we've measured it about 200 or 250 square feet. And I think that's just a result of the high water mm -hmm. or the groundwater is so close to the surface. You're getting that situation where you have some wetland characteris characteristics. So we'd be looking to construct a berm at the end of Robert Lane uh, as the first step. The second step would be to uh, position some leaching facilities uh, uphill, if you will, 
Uh, the first one is consistent of a catch basin with a leach trench, and then a larger catchment area at the top of Robert's, uh, Robert Lane. Uh, again, that would have a uh, leaching, excuse me, a catch basin with a series of four by four concrete galleys. And then the last resort we're proposing is to construct a catchment area with a pump that in the circumstances that there is significant flooding in the area that it would pump the flood water uh, or rainwater, if you will, up the hill to that large uh, set of four by four concrete galleys. So we did meet with Amy uh, about two months ago. I reviewed the plan with her. Uh, because we were dealing within the floodplain and not a true resource as far as a vegetative wetland uh, that uh, the RDA would be suitable. Um, so with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I will note that on number 10 Robert Lane, across the street from 19, uh, is a private residence. The Community Development Partnership has been in contact with the owner and are negotiating uh, they have a verbal commitment or a commitment through we email. Have, we have an email commitment. Email commitment. So the attorneys are getting together and to write a more formal agreement between the two two parties, because uh, we are proposing some fill on on the individual's property for number ten. Uh, so with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Amy. Any thoughts on this one? I've been down here numerous times throughout the years um, for high water events. Um, <coughs> Stated the flooding here is not a result of the Herring River flooding here because <laughs> it, it is flood zone. It is a result of um, rainwater. Even during an average, you know, rainstorm, there is ponding at the base, and during major ones, it does get into the driveways and into the garage basements um, um, of the properties here. So actually, what kind of thought of for a while now it, and conveyed with them is really what you're kind of seeing here. Um, with much better detail than I could ever do. But um, basically multiple treatments, if you will. Berms, um, gutters, basically ways to break up the asphalt as well as leaching areas and, and pumps to get the water uh, out. Um, so this is flood zone. I don't think what they're proposing within the road layout is going to have any impact on the ability of this property to perform in the event of a coastal flood, it's going to have no impact. This is really just to treat rainwater. Um, so I would recommend approval. I think I had a negative two negative on this two. one because yeah. this one technically is a resource area, so it's a two. Mm -hmm. um, nope, I think this is um, the plan and looking forward to seeing how it works. Thanks, Amy. Any comments? No. no. Um, I'm just curious about flow rates. You're proposing a pump. I assume, I have no clue about this myself, but I assume that a three-quarter horsepower pump can keep up with whatever rain events you're, you're considering. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Um, the, the pump has enough capacity volume-wise or capacity-wise to keep up with the inflow, the inflow from a storm event. <laughs> So you, how do you know that? If I well, you well, you calculate the the uh, discharge that a storm would would provide from a contributory area, and then at a a storm event, it is and that this is the pump system is rated for the 25 year storm. So we have a t storm target. So the inflow into that catch basin is going to be at a certain rate, gallons per minute. And as long as the rate of the pump has a higher gallon per minute rate, mm -hmm. it will never back up onto the road. And that's the premise. And what is the 25 year rain event? Um, it has a in, uh, discharge rate of about, um, I don't have my whole file here. Um, I think once all, the, the pump and catch basin will be the last step the last, because if you read my letter, we talked about phasing this in oh, right. from a cost perspective, being community development partnership and in an implementation. Um, but I think, if I remember correctly, the 
the discharge rate, or the in-charge rate, is about three cubic feet per second. And the pump is, is, has a capacity of 10 times that. Thank you. Thank you. No. Jim? Uh, no, I don't have anything. Ready? John, are you going to have to grade this area to, to channel the, <coughs> the uh, water down to the, I assume it's the four foot catch basin that's at the top of the driveway, correct? I'm looking at the elevations, and I, it looks like it's 4.2 in front of the garage, and it goes down to, what, 2.9 or so? <coughs> yes. It all fun currently, it all funnels to in that direction uh, into, the, into the low point where that catch basin is positioned down, by, down um, at the end of Robert Lane. Yeah. Um, we are building the grade up between the end of the pavement and the property line to the north. That's the berm that we talk about. Um, but the pavement all drains in that general area, so we don't really have to get into a drastic repaving or regrading. We are taking advantage of some um, asphalt berms that will direct the upper water into those catchment areas. All right. Currently, they will they travel right through the berm if the berm is you know the berm's not there now, so it travels right through down to the low point. Where the berm would be at the north end of, of this, so basically where that. <coughs> You have a berm here that will catch the water as it comes down I Roberts see. and then right. direct it into here. Uh -huh. And then this catch this catchment area here has a berm diagonally across so water coming down from this area and from the upper area will be directed into the berm and then run towards the catch basin. Okay. So the low point is the idea and the plan is the low point will be dealing with this area on a regular basis. And this air and this area on a substantial storm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. So those other two berms will help mitigate the flow into that pump too, I would assume. Yes. Which would oh, would nice. uh, help offset the capacity issue as well. When we were at the site, I noticed at the north end of the driveway where it gets into the the bushes, whatever the overgrowth there, um, it looked like it was as the plows would go down here, they would pushed up a, um, another berm, <laughs> if you would, uh, which my concern is that that ultimately will overfill the catch basin that you're putting in there. You know, uh, what's proposed to make sure that doesn't happen? The, the second phase or the second component of this is maintain maintenance of, the, of these systems. Yeah. And um, if, if it is ignored like it has been over the years where plows come down and continually to push pebbles, silt, debris at the end, it's going to create the same type of problem because eventually that catch basin will become full. Yeah. So just like the towns clean their catch basins on an annual or biannual basis, CDP is going to be looking at the same type of maintenance. Yeah. All right. Good. I have one other question, if you don't mind. Just to settle in my mind, the pump, is it, does it act like a sump pump? Is it submerged? It's exactly it's a glorified sump pump. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so as the water comes in, there'll be a float. Yep. It will trigger, pump will engage until the float disengages, just like a sump, just a bigger size. Okay, thank you. Well, one other question for you, too. So I'm looking at the plan again. Uh, to the north of the catch basin, mm -hmm. is a 5.5? Yes. Is that an elevation? Yes. And then beyond that is a 3.6? Uh, the, the X with the 3.6 next to it is yep. existing grades. Yep. The 5.5 that's on a leader with a dot is proposed. Oh, so you're going to build that up there? Yes. So if you refer to section AA, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I should have brought a board. If you refer to section AA, your, your catch basin is right here. This is the north side of the property. Yep, oh, I see that so now. So right now the yeah. grade is just shooting down towards the property line and we are going to actually build it up with a crest of 5.5. I see. So you can see it on the section and that's where it is on the point. Why, why wouldn't you move that catch basin back further off of the pavement then to avoid that issue with the maintenance as much? Um, 
Well, uh, we can look at that uh, to push it back. We were trying to build up that berm so it's a natural berm and not a, a hump. Right. Yeah. Um, but we can look at that. I, you know, what we're trying to do is get permission. All of this is not going to be built from day one. Uh, the plan is, and I think I narrated that in my cover letter, is that we're going to do the mound initially while we have the permission of the owner across the street and then see how that responds. Um, there is some drainage that are going into that, in that mound by subsurface, and that's the trap rock you see as the, as the entrance to that, that field. Yep. Um, and then the second phase would be the upper trench and then the larger trench to the north, and then the last resort would be the pump. Um, we've gone back and forth with the CDP that they may install the components at this point in time when they build the berm, but just not install the pump. Mm. Um, you know, the pump is really a last resort. I'm not a big fan of the pump because what happens in a storm, you lose power, no pump. So True. they have to commit <laughs> to a generator. Yeah. So, you know, and there's, a, there's funds involved. And yeah. Community CDB being who they are, they're trying to get the biggest bang for their their dollar, and that's why they're kind of doing this in stages. Okay. All right. Would someone like to make a motion? There might oh. be a comment in the audience. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. Comments from the audience, please. <laughs> <clears throat> My name is Walt Felice, um, Roy Reams. We live behind your property. Um, and we're in favor of whatever you try to do. Um, in the last storm two marches ago, uh, someone decided to put a three-inch trash pump to get rid of the water and put my shed underwater. <laughs> um, that aside, uh, we, I just want to ensure, and Roy and I would like to ensure, that that water isn't going to come towards us. Um, and it doesn't appear that way, and we are both in favor of it. Anything they can do there. I mean, it's horrible. Um, their garages go underwater. Hopefully there's no cars or anything in it. Um, that being said, um, the young lady over here answered one question. It's going to be done in stages. Um, is it ever going to be done? Do you plan on moving it along or just stalling it? Um, yeah, is there a timeline? Yeah, the, the thinking is be because it's water's coming from almost 360 degrees, and it's hard to know what percentage of it comes from where, because it's coming like everywhere. Oh, yeah. So um, that's why we started with the berm first, because we know that'll prevent a portion of it, but nobody knows what that portion is, and we want to see how it performs. The other thing is it doesn't happen in terms of rain. It's long times of period, periods of time between the events. Mm -hmm. So it could happen in two consecutive days. We just yeah. don't know, you know. And so the idea is that we, we, we fully intend to do it because we have to. Mm -hmm. um, but because of the it's affordable housing, they want to make sure uh, we actually spend sure. money sure. Uh, properly. And so we're going to do the first phase first, as John said, yeah. and see how that how it functions. Uh, it, we know that it, you know, it's so close to the water table, maybe it just doesn't drain enough. Oh, yeah. You, we'll have to wait and see. you go down on the side of our property, and on a, in the drought, you can squish along. Um, more or less, uh, dig a hole, and I think you know that it'll, if you dig a hole a foot deep, you have an artesian well. Um, that being said, it, it's fine. It, it looks good. I, I kind of dismissed the electric pump because two marches ago, when the power failed for four days, and one of those pumps doesn't come into play when it's needed. Um, there, there's not going to be any um, water being pumped to an additional uh, catch basin. Um, and then pumps require maintenance, and who's going to go and check to make sure the pump works, et cetera, et cetera. So that part, you know, I think if it works with the berms and the catch basins, good luck. It's going to be a, a great asset to that area. Move forward, please. Thanks. Are you about to make a motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to <coughs> excuse me to approve the RDA with a negative two, suggested by Amy for 
the Community Development Partnership at 19 Robert Lane. Second. Second by Jim. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> opposed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fine. Thank you for accommodating my schedule. Sure. What? Need John too. <laughs> the next two items on the agenda have requested a continuance until June nineteenth for sixty one Bells Neck Road, a proposed new dwelling and appurtenances. Any comments from the audience? Did anyone come to speak on that project? No? Okay. The second one, well let's actually I'll make a motion to uh, continue that to June nineteenth. Second. Second by Stan. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The second notice of intent is for Zero Sequatum Road, proposed storm drainage repairs. And again, they've requested to continue to June 19th. Any comments from the audience? Seeing none, I propose that we do continue this to the 19th. Second by Stan. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, so the last notice of intent of the evening is for 3 Skinnerquit Road. A after the fact filing for cutting vegetation, installing a staircase dock and playground. Good evening, Dan Crow from Moran Engineering, Emma from Blue Flax Design. Um, we're here for uh, Gary and Joyce Petty, who are in the audience. They were in uh, Florida for the winter, but now they're back here. Um, so we're here for after the fact filing uh, for work that was performed um, that was not originally approved by the commission. Um, uh, the way I understand it, a violation letter went out. Petties were um, down south, I believe. Um, their attorney, William Kroll from Howardsport, came to a meeting on April 20th. A uh, fine was negotiated or, or reduced even, and the fine um, was paid. Um, we were hired by the Petties, um, <coughs> my company, and uh, Emma's company were hired at that point to work on this after the fact filing and to pull together the mitigation and um, permitting for um, to bring this up to code. Um, the violations, as I understand, was um, was cutting of a cutting of an area of um, vegetation, uh, construction of a staircase down to the bank. Installation of a dock. Um, both of those were, re were the, the staircase down was repairing. This is um, about 50% what was originally or previously there. The dock replaced um, what had been there for um, certainly before the petties owned the property. So there had been a dock there uh, into the early minimum into the early 90s that the easy um, aerials can be seen. Um, and the installation of a playground at the end of their uh, driveway. Um, so we, Emma and I are here with, uh, for Emma will go over uh, the planting plans to mitigate the planting area. The planting area itself, anybody that was out there today um, is coming back. Uh, there's not an erosion risk by the work, but it was obviously cut down. Um, lower than um, <coughs> expected and much lower than the petties thought was happening. Uh, the dock permit I will go over after um, someone goes through the planting plans. There's never been a good uh, record of this, of the area of this site. Um, the commission didn't, they, I think, was working off of um, quickly drawn sketch for an NOI, 
in the 90s and an old and a septic plan that didn't that was only the only purpose of the septic plan was showing the information required for the septic permit um, so now 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 you have good now the Commission has a good record of the site um, the DP gave us the file number of course DMF for the dock has given their information um, requiring as um, as always in a herring um, air in an area of herring um, habitat a the time of the year um, time of the year restriction for installation of the dock and um, so I, I with that I'll let uh, Emma go through the the planting part of it and um, I'll go through that and then I'll then then I'd like to uh, go over um, the dock part of it. The dock does, of course, need to go to waterways, but in, in order to get this submitted in the 60-day time frame, I, we weren't able to meet the waterways, so we are on for waterways June 19th, which I guess lines up with the next meeting here, so hopefully th those both can um, work one way or another. But um, let's talk. Okay. <laughs> I'm a voter with Blue Flax Design. Um, our management plan is focusing on the natural regeneration of the vegetation that was cut and then also providing the mitigation for the playset that was installed within the 50 to 100 foot buffer. So I'm going to begin by describing the management of the area of cut vegetation within the 50 foot buffer and then I'll go over the mitigation for the playset. Um, so as Dan said, during this past winter, the vegetation within um, <coughs> a roughly 2,000 square foot area within the buffer was cut to about 12 to 24 inches. The vegetation was cut such that the roots remain intact. The vegetation is still alive. Um, it's beginning to regenerate, and I brought some photos uh, that I'm happy to share with you from earlier today of the regeneration. It's all. Um, starting to come back and we can expect that it's going to regenerate significantly within two to three growing seasons. S um, a large portion of the area, I'm, I can pass these around just so you can take a look at them. I'm not sure how recently everybody was out there. Um, some people were out there today with me. Okay. Um, a significant part of the area that was cut is covered in low bush blueberry. Um, and there are other ground covers in that area, including pen sedge and ferns. All the low bush blueberry leafed out this spring, and a lot of the shrubs and saplings are resprouting from the base. Um, other species that are in that area are witherrod viburnum, high bush blueberry, and northern bayberry. So it's um, a really great native plant community that's in there. Um, there are five tree stumps in the area where vegetation was cut and I believe Amy um, had some comments about tree replacement. Um, I don't have a full history of when those trees were cut or what the reason was for um, cutting them but according to the aerial historical aer aerial imagery um, two of those trees were pitch pines and they were cut between 2015-2016 um, so we can discuss the possibilities of replacing these trees, but I really want to strongly emphasize that there's about 30 plus oak saplings that are coming back. And so I think um, we have an opportunity to select saplings and manage those into full size trees pretty easily from the trees that are existing. Um, so our recommended strategy for restoration is allowing the natural regeneration um, the primary driver of that is the, to not cause more harm to the resource area than has already been done, knowing that the vegetation, um, the diverse plant community that we have there is going to regenerate naturally if left alone. Um, so what we don't want to see in this area is overplanting um, where existing nat native vegetation already is. Um, the overcrowding can lead to unhealthy vegetation. We also want to minimize the disturbance of the soils and the root systems. All the soil, all the slopes on this site are currently stable. The roots were not disturbed um, in the area of vegetation cutting, which means that those root systems are going to send up vigorous growth within the next couple of seasons. 
Um, we are re recommending some re replanting in select areas um, along the top of the slope and in areas where vegetation was previously lacking. So 33 shrubs and two service berry will be planted in that area. Um, but the key to our proposed restoration is a balance of um, our intervention method of replanting and also protecting what's left. Um, and I think that the balance between those two things is really what's going to be best for the resource area to protect it going forward. Um, the trees along the uh, edge of the wetland that were topped will be correctively pruned to encourage um, healthy growth going forward. None will be removed. Um, and then, so looking at the um, temporary playground structure that was installed within the 50 to 100 foot buffer, um, the, the petties uh, were under the impression when it was installed that they were in compliance with the regulations. Um, and that it's in, it is intended to be a temporary structure. So I just wanted to make those couple of comments um, about it. To provide mitigation after the fact, um, we're proposing to restore the remaining portion of the 50-foot buffer that is not currently vegetated. Um, so that requires removing 560 square feet of lawn along the top of the slope, um, the area shaded in yellow on the plan. Um, and then in addition to that, there are a number of invasive species found throughout, which I'm sure you saw when you were out at the site. Um, and removing those would offer a pretty significant improvement. The invasive species are concentrated in the area shaded in blue on the plan, which is a 4,700 square foot area. And most of it is English ivy, which has spread throughout and climbed up several trees, um, potentially causing long damage to those, long-term damage to those trees. Um, we also found Japanese barberry, vi vine honeysuckle, multiflora rose, Asiatic bittersweet, and Japanese holly. Um, there's also poison ivy and greenbrier found in patches throughout the property. Both of these are native. Um, they tend to thrive in areas of disturbance um, and can outcompete other native understory species. We never manage these with the goal to eradicate them, but we are proposing to manage them to make sure that they do not become the dominant species in the understory. Um, and the, so the invasive um, species management area is approximately 4,700 square feet, as I s previously stated. We'd like to propose that at least 30% of that is taken into consideration as mitigation for the playset, which would um, count 1,400 square feet. Um, toward the mitigation total. So that would um, offer an, a ratio of two to one um, square footage for the um, playset that was installed. Um, and then further uh, to protect the 50 foot no disturb zone, we're proposing a single split rail fence along the edge of the buffer um, to provide a barrier to disturbance. So with that, um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have about the vegetation management. And I think you um, are going to cover the dock, or right? Uh, yeah, I could go over the dock quick. Um, so the dock is, like I say, has been there. Uh, it is unpermitted. It was um, rebuilt without a permit. Uh, the dock does meet um, the requirements. Um, the the pond itself is not a pond that, um, by, by the bylaw, doesn't allow motors. Um, just like the, however, just, just like the slope on the side of the pond is steep, uh, the slope in the pond is, is, um, is fairly steep, too, for a pond. And it does, even though, even though it's only out the um, 22 feet, it does meet the two and a half feet at the very end required. Uh, again, there won't there won't even be motor boats on the pond or on here. Um, so this uh, the one thing about the the the, um, the way the stairs come down and land in that dock. Uh, 
We're asking for the first three feet to be a landing and to be able to stay permanently because there's no, I can't think of a reasonable way not to disturb the bottom of the bank and have your stairs stop right at the, where the, where the pond bank is right at the pond, is right at the edge of the wetland. There's no, there's no reasonable way to bring, bring the um, required seasonal parts in and out. So that we are asking for is the first, the first three feet to have a landing at the bottom of the stairs so that the work can be done without destroying the edge of the pond, our work of bringing the dock um, in and out. Other than that, it does meet the requirements of, um, of uh, your regulations, the bylaw, and I believe uh, general certification through the, um, through the DEP license. Uh, it does have half-inch spacing. Uh, right now it's a 18-foot pier out with a 60-foot, um, uh, basically a four-foot wide dock. Um, 40 by four. The stairs coming down, uh, the original steps, I, mean, I believe the, the, um, the pre-existing steps are in place. There was new four by four posts and a railing installed um, at the existing spot. Um, looking to have that uh, legitimized. The, there's at grade steps that have been there, um, obviously since the probably since the property was, was um, started under residential use. Uh, I think under under um, Blue Flax's plan, they have setting a couple resetting some of the steps that are disturbed. That's the second part with that. So again, we go to um, waterways next week um, and to get their approval or their comments, one or the other. I'm assuming it would be approval. We can meet their meet their uh, the town's regulations. Uh, so with that, we'll um, we'll ask for comments. Thank you both. Um, maybe any summaries for us. First, before I comment on the proposal, um, I have some questions and comments that I'd like to ask of the petties who are here. Um, I'm very glad you're here. And so my first question is, is this violation was noticed at the end of December, very early January. The letter went out to you immediately thereafter with a deadline that this had to have been filed by the end of March. We didn't hear anything, and we know the letter was received because it was sent certified return receipt. Um, we did not hear anything until, uh, not even a phone call, nothing, until your attorney came in April, past that deadline. One of the reasons we put a March deadline on this was because we were really hoping to capture this potential growing season for potential replanting. So I'm just curious about the delay. If you could come up to the mic. I, I got the letter in January. Yep. As soon as I got the letter, I called Bill Crow. Okay. And we responded to you. Um, you want, when did you send the letter out to us? In January. But Bill did not attend a meeting until April, well after our deadline of the end of March. As soon as I got the letter, okay. I, I contacted Okay. I appreciate Bill. that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, I mean, it is. It's a significant violation, and this property has been in violation before, unfortunately under your ownership. Um, we have record of that for, for clearing activities. So um, it's, it's a significant violation when you clear cut like this. Um, can you elaborate maybe a little bit more on what your goals were here? There was some you alluded to maybe that there was a misunderstanding between yourselves and the contractors. Um, and I just, I just want to better understand the situation. Well, we asked just to trim that because we have a lower level, which my daughter's in, just to have a little more light and mm -hmm. a little better view. Mm -hmm. They cut it down, which we were astonished at what they did, and we were in Florida at the time. So that there was just, I don't know, what could I say? It's just an unfortunate incident, but it is growing back. Yeah. The place that we really thought we were beyond the area that was restricted. Mm -hmm. Again, the landscape measured. 
I could have went further right. I had the land to do it, mm -hmm. but it was just in the place where it made sense, the end of the driveway. Yep. And there's also a tree there, which I spent over $1,000 to save. Mm -hmm. So I really thought we were within yep. a legal to, for the place set. And the place set also has sentimental value mm -hmm. to me because my uncle passed away, he left me money, and I put that there for my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, I just like astounded that is not, and I went on the advice of the landscaper, and it made sense to me, the driveway ended, it was beyond the lawn, so mm -hmm. from what I could gather, it made sense to me that it was, it's a swing set. Mm -hmm. Now, so the, 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 uh, when you look at what, what they cut down, I mean, it looks horrible. It's not something, my father's ashes are back there. Mm -hmm. um, we've been there for 17 years. I respect the pond. Mm -hmm. This was a, it was a big mistake. Yep. Okay, I wasn't there, my fault, I accept it, and I'll take care of it whatever way I have to. But, but if you hired are. somebody to prune again after, without, per, I mean, you had, you had a violation before. Well, the first mm -hmm. time, the first violation, we bought the house in 2003, mm -hmm. that back was a total mess. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were bushes as high, going over the deck, and we came to get permits, mm -hmm. and whatever we did, it really wasn't, it really was it, nothing. It really, this is worse than what we did before. I mean, when was, they cut they cut big bushes down behind yeah. the house. That's what the violation was. Mm -hmm. um, but it was me going towards the house. This is on the deck. I would consider this worse than, than the first yeah. time. And the first time, there was no, no maliciousness done on anything. Right. It wasn't for a view. We yeah. weren't cutting down trees for a view the first time. It was nothing to say. It is the second time. It's 17 years later. But what I'm getting at is, regardless of the height. You knew that area was in, within conservation jurisdiction back there. So even if you only hired them to take a little bit off, you didn't have oh, a, you didn't you know, have a permit to do it. it. Again, I'm not going to say I'm yep, not wrong. I'm, I'll accept it, and I'll take time to take care of it the best we can. And you won't hear from me again after this year. I promise you. And you see, we haven't disturbed the other side, where our house is not, mm -hmm. and have other people around the pond mm -hmm. that have lawns, and you know, I'm just. We yeah. understand, and it was—I mean, it was a very nicely. I mean, as, as Emma stated, the species that are coming back there, which are indicative really of what growing. was there, it's, and I don't know why they're very they're diverse. Growing. Are very diverse. So, um, and I do think your approach of letting what what what's growing back thrive and come back is the right approach, and then augment or supplementing that with additional plantings, if if need be. I think that's the right approach for it. Um, I just wanted to, because we hadn't had a chance to chat, I wanted to have an opportunity to kind of know what happened. So, um, so I, there's, I don't have any questions about the stairs. Um, I think having a little landing makes sense. The dock itself, so our dock regulations require the docks to be seasonal. Um, to my understanding, this dock stayed in all winter this year. And um, based on what I saw out there when I was out there in January, it was there. It was in the water. Um, it also is pretty fixed, so I'm interested in how it's going to come out. It's not one of our, but the posts are driven in, and it, um, a lot of the docks now we're seeing are have big feet on them and have removable components. This seems like it would be a lot to kind of dismantle it. Uh, th th right, they'll have to make changes to the dock so it is seasonal. To so the dock the should class. be a seasonal dock, and we have a, usually a time of year that it can be in between roughly May 15th and October 15th annually, and it would have to be stored upland. That's our dock and pier regulation. That, that dock has been there, I have pictures of it since like 1968. Mm -hmm. We replaced the board, I mean, what was there? I mean, it was already there, it's not grandfathered in. Once you we can't remove, we don't have something. a place to remove the dock. We're on a steep embankment. Yep. And that's why we live on steep embankments and they bring the sections up. Um, so even though that w we replaced what was there to begin with, that's replaced, been there? Well, legally you replaced it. Okay. And what um, you replaced would have to have had conformed with our today's regulations on docks. We right, should, okay. just should elect it the way it was. Have you ever had ice damage? I, I'd be concerned about ice damage with no. a, a fixed overwintering dock. No? Is that something you've seen, Dan, before in some of these ponds or? Permanent docks? Yeah. It's fairly rare. Um, 
you would think ice would get to those. Maybe not every year, but you know, once in a while there'd be a winter. I think winter. they must be on the right side of the pond, right? Yeah. So that, that, would, that would be uh, my concern also, that it would get ice jacked up. But, right. But um, this thing has been in place. Um, I would say that it's unpermitted, and the bylaw is pretty clear. So mm -hmm. um, obviously the owners would love to have a variance to leave a permanent dock in, but I think the but And that's up to the board. I'm just... Yeah. Up to you. <coughs> How old are the timbers? Are they? Is it been? Has that particular dock been there for a long time? This exact dock was replaced. That position of the dock has been there right since. It's the fairly new. Yeah. Um, well, we can discuss that. I, I'd yeah. be concerned over a ten-year period that ICE is going to get that dock. That, that's what I would expect yeah. at some point. Um, my only, I, I had sent an email to Dan and Teresa Emma today um, about just some of the thoughts on the planting plan. So if I do appreciate that you quantitated what you were counting as mitigation for the playground area. Um, the playground area, I mean, it's a fairly formalized area. I would say it's not just a swing set. Um, it's got timbers around it. It's, um, it's a fairly formal area. It is what I would consider by its definition a structure. Um, so I, I, you, you do have to mitigate for it, which you're proposing. Um, my only hesitation on some of this blue area that's kind of around the 75 foot and greater away from the pond is you say manage invasive and aggressive species, bare areas to post vegetation rule will be seeded with a shade tolerant native seed mix. A lot of that area to the west and south mm -hmm. of the playground area, a lot of that is invasive. Mm -hmm. So simply removing the invasives and planting with a native seed mix, which, well, one, what do you mean by native seed mix? Is it grasses or is it um, other things? And would that lend itself to being more usable yard area grant rather than mitigation? Mm -hmm. So I think if you were going to consider it as part of mitigation instead of as, as part of mitigation that it should be planted with appropriate native um, shrub species potentially. Mm -hmm. um, the seed mix that we would use in that area is listed under the grass and wildflower mix and the planting schedule. So it's a mix of grasses and wildflowers, cool okay. and warm season. Pretty typical of our restoration projects yep. where, um, and that would be- like a meadow mix. Yeah, exactly. But um, that would be used only in areas where um, there was large um, areas of English ivy mm -hmm. coming up. Um, but when I was out there walking through the, this, uh, this western mm -hmm. or southern um, side and then up around the back, especially this area in here, has a lot of high bush blueberry, mm -hmm. um, huckleberry, low bush blueberry. There were a lot of natives along this edge here. Yep. And then up here, we kind of get into some That's what I ornamental. Saw mostly. Yeah. There were some Invasive. rhododendron. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, it, the, the area definitely wouldn't, we wouldn't be opening it up to lend itself to lawn space. Okay. Um, we could discuss with them about continuing that um, split rail fence around the side of that yard. Commission, I was just, so I, I appreciate I think the it would clarification. Be, okay. Yeah. No, I think good. there were actually would be quite a number of natives that would fill in continue to fill in this yeah area. and maybe it's just hard to see because of the invasives crowding mm -hmm. some things out mm -hmm. and I didn't look I didn't go into the weeds today yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I think so the playground area um, I would say with proper mitigation at a two to one if we determine what that proper mitigation is exactly I think we could it's greater than the six it's right about 60 feet away I think maybe we could see fit to um, potentially permit that um, and um, I think I'll stop. <laughs> okay. Just to clarify in that last comment, I is that area you just described part of the mitigation square footage? You had stated, so Emma, you had stated the total area of invasives of treatment was 4,700-ish square feet. Mm -hmm. And you'd like, and obviously not all of that, um, some of its treatment of invasives and some of its replanting, but about 1,400 of that is what you'd consider mitigation for the roughly 600 and something square foot of um, 
playground. Right, and so then that, in addition to ve yeah. uh, vegetating the rest of the 50-foot buffer, right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, is what we'd like to count for mitigation. Yeah, because obviously only about 30, maybe 30 to 50 percent of it is invasive vegetation. There's overstory canopy. Yeah. It's all mm -hmm. a lot of native shrubs in there. I would agree with that, maybe with discussion about what the species should be. Right. I, I think I agree that I'd like to see it not have the potential to be mowed. Yeah, mowed, use lawn. Yeah. That, that would not really qualify as mitigation in my mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Paula, do you want to start? No, I'm all set. Okay. John, you good? You okay, Stan? Okay. Oh, <coughs> Jim? Um. Well, yeah, I'd like to see condition that uh, the area, the invasive species management area should be left to naturalize after um, mm -hmm. treatment and understory allowed to grow. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, the, my other concern was with the, uh, the amount of uh, the sumac in there. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not, I don't know if I'm 100% sure what Fragrant sumac is. I guess you see that on uh, coastal banks sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't. It doesn't. Doesn't seem like a particularly natural um, <coughs> plant in that environment. Um, we like to use it. Um, it is a native species. We like to use it because right. it's spreading rhizomatous and it's clump. It's um, not clump forming, but. Um, it creates a nice mass along the border of mm -hmm. areas where there's going to be foot traffic and stuff like that. So it's nice and dense. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of what we're going for along that edge there. That's why it was chosen. There are certainly other native species that could um, fill in that area, but this one works really well in conjunction with the fact that the house is right up against the 50 foot buffer. So right. We do have it. So. We do see a lot more, a little bit more on coastal right. areas. As far we as do actually area. have a lot. We do have some at Thompson's Field, and it mm -hmm. has um, done quite well in more of an upland, um, non-coastal habitat. It's really great for wildlife um, as a food source. Um, I think it could do. I think it could do well. Uh, yeah, I would yeah. be more concerned about doing too well, if anything. Oh, okay. uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Taking over the other things. You're I don't saying. know if I've ever seen it on a pond bank before, um, and maybe just a little more diversity. In, in so that. maybe reduction of those, um, the number of those, and increase well, an increase, in increase in some of the others. Some of the um, others, sure. particularly in the area that was was cut, you have it kind of not just on the edge, maybe, but it appears to be in about a ten foot area. But um, yeah, so along this. Um, upper edge, the, there is um, quite a bit of English ivy here in this corner, mm -hmm. so that's why we were filling in that um, area, because that will be removed. And then this was fairly sparse, um, as, and also where those other plantings are going <coughs> to be, those shrubs there. All right. Well, yeah, I, I think it would seem to be a more natural solution to have more diversity in that, in that plan. And then my other concern would be what whether the canopy species that will become in the clear cut area mm -hmm. you're planning on fostering the oaks is yeah so I think selectively um, <coughs> selecting some of those oaks that are regenerating um, and then kind of using a coppice um, coppicing techniques to manage them into full size trees would work mm -hmm. really well so if we choose a number of them um, rather than planting in New oaks. Right. Yeah. I know it's hard to, to uh, plant oaks anyway. Um, well, I suppose that makes sense, but that there, there apparently were canopy trees there before. Is that correct? I'm not. I don't have the full history of when those were there. Uh -huh. I counted five stumps, but those weren't, they don't look like recent cuts. I don't mm -hmm. think that any tr full size trees were taken down during this clearing um, over this winter. Um, the aerial imagery that I looked at showed that the pitch pines were taken down around 2015. But well, we'd still probably want to have them, you know. It shouldn't have been done anyways. Yeah. I, when I did see it in January, I mean, I saw chips. I saw it looked, some of them looked fairly recent. Okay. Um, but I so I guess that would have to be in a 
you know, what are conditions and you know in, in the three years see those oaks get up to you know head height or something but that they be maintained uh, as canopy allowed to grow as canopy yeah. trees mm -hmm. so uh, just so I'm clear too <coughs> uh, that, so there are a lot of them coming yes. back right Perhaps so it would, this would be for mm -hmm. selective ones to be yeah. allowed to become major trees because otherwise if you let all of them become major trees which one yeah. I'm sure the petties and we're not here to deprive anybody of views mm -hmm. or anything like that um, I'm sure that that wouldn't be something they would want but also mm -hmm. these other species that you're proposing to plant with such a heavy canopy if these were allowed to grow wouldn't work mm -hmm. right so it would just to be understanding it's not going to be all the saplings that are coming up it's yeah, maybe, just maybe be that should be quantified selected. somehow I don't um, think it needs to be in the order. Well, maybe I, I something like there were five trees but removed. Maybe it's five right, right. that are allowed to regrow. Something like that, like some yeah. approximate locations and yeah. quantification. Of we that. can pick one so that they're <coughs> kind of dispersed out. Mm -hmm. Is that in the view corridor, so to speak? Yeah. It is. So um, we could also look at maintaining a view corridor by selecting ones that are slightly offset from an, a view or something like that. A view, a view corridor would be essentially new, a new, uh, a different filing unless they file for that now. Uh, right. Maintaining a view know. corridor. Yeah. I don't think we know. They could always come be be come before for pruning yeah. and whatnot in the future. Right. Exactly. For so this to pr prune. prune them up and create <coughs> right, a I view through the vegetation in the future. We still want to be practical, but it's something that will stay. You know. Right. Mm -hmm. we'll take, we can take a look on the site. It sounds like a meeting with um, Conservation Commission, or at least the conservation agent and the landscape uh, contractor could, could come up with the best species to uh, remain. That's good to me. Okay, that's all I have. I, I, I have no questions on the landscape. I, I'm, I just, I, I'm still conflicted on this dock, um, regardless of the fact that it had been there since at least 1995, I guess, is, is some evidence. Um, but it obviously was replaced fairly recently, I'd guess, in the last two years ago. Two years ago. Um, and had you come before the commission, then it would have complied with our. I didn't know I needed to turn up another dock. <laughs> well, it was already there. We just replaced it with a different footprint. I know. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, it was there. I have pictures like this from 1958. An aerial of the dock being there, so I. I got, a, the, uh, got a dock company system. from from um, it was Yamut. Um, just didn't know I needed to need anything. They, 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 they did. They did. They said yeah. that it was the same footprint. Just as long, as long as I was putting yeah. the same footprint yeah. dock in, you were fine. And that's yeah. what that's yeah. yeah. Right. I didn't doubt like. Myself I, I and Nikki are always available. To, like, we enjoy, actually really enjoy working with people to make sure everything is compliant. So if you ever have any questions, well, call us. Means, yeah, like, it's just, yeah, you think you're talking to the right people that are in the business yeah. and do a lot of docks in the area that they said if you were staying the same, you weren't changing anything, mm -hmm. that you didn't need to go. Yeah, same in every and town. Right. And I have pictures from 1968 of that dog <coughs> being there. Yep. I think if there was a license, this the dock company was a little bit correct. You know, if there's a license, you can rebuild in that license by the right. state by that license. But it's still obviously they should have asked you for a license. Rule. Yeah. Okay. Um, that, rather than that, I'm, mm -hmm. I didn't have a lot of questions. I, I, I'd like to go back to a few things. One is the cutting. I understand that part. And and again, we're really addressing these the violations that occurred. So construction of the staircase down the bank, those stairs don't look that, are, are, is any work gonna be done to improve those in addition to what's there right now? We're proposing to just reset some of the timbers. Mm -hmm. um, they're off kilter. Right, yeah, that's why like walking down yep. there, it's a little bit like they need to be, yeah, have they some would maintenance. Just be replaced in kind. And then I guess we, Regarding the installation of the dock, like you say, it's the footprint, but the new rules would have been to have a temporary dock with feet, not I don't think it, I have to look at our regulations. I don't think our dock regulations say it has to be big feet, which rests on the bottom. I, so, I think it says it can be piles, but it is supposed to be a seasonal thing. And then I guess the last thing is the playground. 
Mm -hmm. Are we suggesting we leave it where it is? Where is that? My recommendation is that with proper mitigation. Um, okay, that's what I was trying to go back. That, I didn't yeah, remember. With what proper did, so. mitigation, either this or slightly tweaked, then I would recommend you let them keep it. Okay. I think it was something if they came to us with two to one mitigation, we probably would have permitted. There was so much there, I just didn't remember yeah. that point. Okay. It's That's in the 50 to 100, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's outside the 60. Yeah. So, yeah. And the fines apply to what two structures? The play area and the cutting is what the fines um, okay. ended up applying to. <sighs> okay. They really don't have, other than the, if you go to their property, I mean, the backyard is, is uh, with the exception of the cutting, and we'll, it'll be completely natural in the future. So. As far as usable yard area, there's really not much, so. And actually, I'll just, uh, an additional comment to that is that this area down here yeah. is gorgeous yeah. native habitat. It's all high bush yeah. blueberry, it's lovely. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. letting them have the play area is okay. Mm -hmm. It's also um, very much meant to be a temporary structure for grandchildren for just a couple of years. I think it'll come down in the future. Just, just one point back to the dock. You had mentioned having a platform there so they can remove sections of the dock. Going back to that point, I don't see how you even take that dock apart. The current dock? Yeah. Right. It would have to. It would have to be. Um, changes would need to be made mm -hmm. to the dock so it could come apart. I think we do have to go to waterways and then come revisit the dock at the next meeting. Uh, yeah. We wouldn't be closing necessarily. Okay, so that, that's good. So we can think about that feature. Um, is everyone happy with the planting plans? We we didn't get to see it very much in advance of the hearing. So no, I I was out last week, and I don't know when it became available for and Dropbox or anything for you. Yeah. So yeah, we didn't get to see it. I w I think we've discussed really good items here, and I think as long as we can condition the the project to have some definition to what's going to grow back in, in the cleared area in terms of species, numbers of oaks, <coughs> and, and have a little bit of definition to what's supposed to be there. Okay, I think if we select um, five of the oaks to replace the mm -hmm. five stumps that were found, um, and we can work with Amy on deciding where- I can meet you out there. Fall. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. If you wanted to see on a plan where they were, I mean, I, mean, I could see you. I could meet you ahead of time, like right. soon. And I think would be interested in conditioning the, the blue area um, where the invasives are to make sure that it doesn't become a future, no, mode you know, zone. mode zone, um, yeah. open space. Okay. That's definitely going to be a mix of woody vegetation. And just the, the seeding is only intended to establish a ground cover so that right. it's not bare soil. That's I guess my interest is I've seen so many properties change hands and see things change once right. that happens. So I, I think I'd like to see our conditions be fairly tight for that, that mm -hmm. application. I think there's been a lot of progress. Yeah, okay. So we'll continue, when would you like to continue until? Uh, to the 19th. Okay. Well, we can, yeah, so it's the same date as waterways, but maybe we can either, Do maybe it. we can put you later on the agenda so you have a chance to go to waterways first. They're usually uh, much quicker than we are. Yes, that would be ideal. Is that okay with you, Mr. Chairman? I think or so. I think some of us are due to go to waterways at five o'clock and then come over here. That's oh. how it works. Did you hear about that? Nope. Okay, we can talk about that later. <laughs> Do I have to go? <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't really affect us here, I don't think. No, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, yeah, if you guys want to come on the 19th, that's fine. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, we'd like to continue to the 19th. Okay, any further comments or requests? Well, thank you. I think this was really helpful to thank you. You know, get things open. So I, I move that we continue to June 19th. I second. Seconded by Stan. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. I'm really glad that you guys came. Oh, we would have been here if it wasn't for No worries. Could we take a uh, quick break? Sure. We're going to take a, a short break before Sounds the next. Great. <laughs> We're done with the. Uh, actually, yeah, we. So the next, just because they're here, if we could take the DAX. <coughs> when we get back from a break, we'll take the DAX. Mm -hmm. And then we were supposed to have a discussion about the bugs, and I did let um, yeah. him know that it was tonight. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't feel it's. Well, probably yeah, appropriate shore road, to, yeah, shore road too. well yes but I mean the major discussion about bogs tonight probably didn't happen I think either we take on the lawn piece which I wouldn't mind well, doing well I think let's do it yeah and we put the, the bogs off 
I did do a draft language for that. Too. Yes, I saw that. A little bit. I didn't looks finish. Looks good. Looks good. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Two minute break. <clears throat> okay. Permit. <clears throat> if you want to come up, please. So, just as a real quick inter introduction, when we considered this potentially for a certificate of compliance, we kind of discovered that um, it work well. The work um, 
maybe the driveway is a little bit bigger. There was some stone retaining walls that maybe replaced some timber retaining walls. And this is um, essentially on the coastal bank and within the 50 foot buffer. If you recall when this was permitted um, for the septic system, they were originally going to go up on the road. They were going to access the property through the back um, on, from the road. And we had actually said to them, if you can get through from the front, um, then that's okay as long as we kind of put things back the way they were. So things went back, but not exactly how they were, and that's um, why we're here today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi, good evening. Uh, I'm David Dax, my wife, Dean Dax. I have to apologize, apologize twice. Uh, one that we couldn't make it on April 3rd. Uh, we got the email, we were away, and we asked the engineering company that was involved to come, they couldn't come. And um, we actually didn't send the information in advance, also wasn't very clear. Um, um, I'm here to try to explain the, the event that took place. And like Amy explained, we were supposed to go from the back of the property to do the type of fight that the town requested us to do. And because of the uh, way the separate system was the engineers explained to us the limitation <coughs> of the um, materials that they can use and the better system is really needed uh, to come from the front which we found out that required also much heavier equipment that we anticipate. So uh, obviously we're sitting here after the event happened and we are a little bit in an uncomfortable situation. Um, so I'll try just to explain that when we got the email uh, the, the driver was extended uh, in certain, um, by certain square footage, basically. I just want to, to show a couple of things, and I worked very hard on this. I hope so. I can help you. Okay. So, yeah. so basically, we got this this email with the before and after. And obviously when you look after and before, it looks like a big difference. But uh, once we imposed the actual size of the driveway historically, and- Can you, sorry, I think Jack, were you think saying hold the mic up to him? Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought you meant the photos. Could you hold that? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm Thank sorry. Thank you, we appreciate it. Oh, I'm sorry, okay, so um, first we live in the house only five years. So the driveway, uh, is a driver for that probably wasn't maintained for the last 25 years. I'm just bringing some picture. This is the picture from the probably 80s. And as you can see, the driver goes all the way to the retainer wall and all around. And the same thing here when there was not so many, uh, I mean, trees around. And where we imposed it on the uh, Back to the drawing, you can see that the difference is not as much because when you look from the top, you see a lot of moss, a lot of uh, weeds, and looking at the uh, brushes, uh, the bushes that were on the uh, south side of the property, the left side of the drive, I recall, the retainer was here and they were like leaning about three feet. So the impression was that the expansion was much bigger. And I'll go and explain what happened, actually. So, um, when Just to explain, I mean, um, I inherited the house. My cousins owned the house for, I guess, 60 years. Mm -hmm. So the septic was part because they were cousins, not a direct relative right. that I had to mm -hmm. comply. Which the septic was done at the back of the house was extensive work. So what happened is when, um, I'll take this down, uh, the equipment uh, was brought in and the work started, we just realized the magnitude of, of the work that's going to be done. And basically the whole front was demolished. Um, there was heavy equipment going up the property this to the, the back of the yeah, house. That's how they got to the back. And you can see this is from the house. We took some pictures 
At that time, we didn't know that it would come before you. <laughs> but we took it because <laughs> we were just completely amazed. Yeah. And this is basically the front of the house. Yeah. Um, and, well, my wife is here. I'm half sharp. So <laughs> basically, we dealt with this. Everything was moving very quickly. And they were working three, four, five days on the back of the house. We honestly co were concentrating to do this, the title five. Separate. That was our fear because the entire yard at the back was dug out. Mm -hmm. There are some trees that were removed, old trees, and we were concentrating just to survive that part, and actually we had to do a lot of work in, in, the, in the basement because there was sub pump and so on and so forth. And as it work went, we realized that actually we have a big problem because we were not really prepared ourselves how to, mm -hmm. it wasn't fixing, it's to basically to restore the entire front. So, as the work was going on, we started discussing uh, what are we going to do, what are we are going to put back. And the good thing is that the contractor itself was not, it was really good people. They did an excellent job. And they, after a certain recommendation, they, uh, they we were looking at, uh, to use man-made materials, which obviously we got a time frame of months to install back. And we couldn't leave this the way it is because the winter was coming. So they came with, with, uh, with a good suggestion. And the suggestion was to say, they told us, why you're not going to use boulders? Uh, we didn't think about the boulders at that time, but we are by the river and there's some natural boulders and our neighbor has boulders. And we said, well, oh, this is actually good. And the, the best part was that they are, uh, they were the people that were able to, to perform the job. So the equipment was on location. They supplied us with the boulders. And so we start working with, with, the, with the area. And now I'm getting to the point why we uh, had to spend a little bit the, uh, the driver. We did not have any intention to enlarge the driver per se for more driver space. So. So the work was done actually quite quickly and this is, again I should have sent you some photos but I wasn't really aware of the process. So what happened was we installed the, board, the boulders on the, I call it the left side of the property and the right side which is the south and the north. Uh, this was the property before you see, this is the curb. This was the uh, concrete which was falling apart, was very old, was cracked. Uh, and obviously we took the, the opportunity to, to enhance the, the, the front. Um, and so what happened, and, and that's why we're here. When they went with the equipment to the back of, of the yard, the equipment just basically destroyed the whole front. So when we start putting it back, on their suggestion, we curb a little bit the, um, the, um, the, the, the south side of the, um, what, what now we call retain the wall. And we installed steps, which actually we went and we utilized the best step that, you know, was from stones to be able to, you know, to replace the old one that was concrete and everything was falling apart. The right side, the question was why you had to go and push a little bit the right side. And here I'm going to something that really is a situation that we're dealing for the last five years, some of you know, with a neighbor that had a fish house. So what happened was he basically put a marker right in front of our, uh, if you look at the driver, basically that is his pole that he put a few years ago. And then he brought in and put stones or I think he put uh, shells mm -hmm. to mark his, uh, his, his, his territory. When we start working, physically when the contractor start working, we had every, almost every day police coming. 
to our location because they were driving on this property or they just parked a little bit. And we realized that the, the only thing to solve this issue for the future is to scale down by one or two feet the, uh, what, we, what we tell you all, a little bit in, and give us the ability to come on a very narrow road and turn into the driveway. Because we're looking at this, the gate is here. If you see there are two stars here, these are the poles. This we had to pull out because of the construction. So historically, we used to come around this property and go in. But uh, with the situation that we're facing, we just realized that um, we had to find a way that we're just going to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. drive into a parking without driver without any issue. So that's why uh, we were at, we scaled a little bit uh, the um, this original uh, retainer wall, and this is this is the difference. Again, I as far as measurement, I we didn't take all the measurement, but this area is about take a give about. 65 feet, square feet. It goes from one feet to maybe two feet. This area I calculated is about, I would say 90 feet. So, and if you look at this area from the view of the house, this is where the retainer wall was. And you can see it on this side. So actually here we pushed it a little bit in just to, have a nice curve. And this is the end result which we used, uh, again, with the advice of the contractors, the materials and, you know, we put uh, stones to replace. And honestly, at that time, we thought we were doing the right thing. And now we are in a situation that we are a little bit uh, in a bind. Um, Show them so, that so, we left the rock and the fence. Right, so if, if, if you can see, this rock used to be inside, I'm sorry, inside, we took it and put it right in front here, and basically that nobody can park here and we're not going to utilize it. How to, to solve the, 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 what they call a problem right now, we spoke with Amy and she came to the property. This was done around August, right? Yeah, end of August. End of August. Everything is holding excellent. They really did a very good job, the contractor. Um, number one, we definitely, we lost, we lost all the um, vegetation uh, on this side because the equipment just destroyed everything and we actually planted some things, did not hold because A, we probably didn't use the right plants, B, we don't have any uh, irrigation there so we and, and the winter was coming so we definitely you know on the advice of Amy we, we, we got the list we're going to plant new uh, vegetation on, on the left side we'll be dead to do it on the right side which originally there wasn't and so that's not the issue and if if necessary we, you know we can we can uh, that's the blue thing that's why I have the blue here um, we, we can exchange um, some of the, uh, the, the driveway and sorry, I'm trying to give a stick as much as I can. And we change and, and plant here also any trees that can survive that location and we can fill it uh, and move the stone a little bit. And that's basically the the, the whole the whole situation that we got into. Right. I mean, at that time when we worked, I mean, the honesty, uh, we want, nobody told us, listen, you're doing something not right, because we went by advice of, and they're good people, they're, they're professional people. Um, okay, well, well, thank you. Um, let, let's hear from Amy so we can find out exactly what was done that would be yep. considered a violation, and if you could talk about also where the 50-foot line sure. falls, where the 100-foot line falls. Yep. So I can I need these back, but I will pass yep. these along to you. Yep. A couple of these, so you can see the wetland lines. Um, a couple of you are going to have to share over there. This is your 
plan from your septic. Yep. I have one more that can be another one. Uh, I'll it. Okay, so what happened is um, the DAX has requested a certificate of compliance from the Conservation Commission for their septic system. We did that because when we went to the site, we discovered that things um, weren't. Somebody's on a mic stand. You're on a microphone. Can you no problem. Um, so we discovered that the driveway and um, walls were a little bit off. Um, the commission actually did say, if possible, it would be better to go up through the driveway rather than up the slope on the northeast corner, um, which was going to have to remove a tree, and it was a steeper right. slope. Um, but we said it had to be pr put back the way it was. So it was a septic upgrade from a cesspool to a, a Title V system, which was a big Im improvement. Mm -hmm. um, but seeing as how the coastal bank really is right at the edge of their property, um, they're in flood zone, and they have, as you can see, on the northeast side, you can see a line right next to the house that says top of bank, because there you actually have the proper slope for it to be a bank, and then it kind of just tapers into floodplain, um, and you still have the 50 foot, you can see the 50 foot, 100 foot buffer. So this is in the 50. Um, it is very helpful to have the old photos versus the new. So um, I think where we're at is there's a little bit of a larger driveway. And instead of wooden retaining walls, which were there, there are rock. I don't particularly have a... No, it was cement. It was cement. cement. Okay, there were different retaining walls. There's new retaining walls there. Um, the boulders, in my opinion, are okay. Um, more so it was um, the planting on top of both sides, that the mulched area one, we probably wouldn't, we would have said no dyes or chemicals, which we talked about on site. But the plantings um, didn't hold because they may not have been the appropriate ones for this site. Um, so you have a bit of a larger driveway and then above the retaining walls, which previously had been creeping juniper and some other um, vegetation, is pretty denuded now. So m to keep it really brief, my recommendation is that they work with me to plant appropriate things above those areas and that to do to offset the expansion of the driveway by putting by replanting where the blue triangle is mm -hmm. it's as simple as that we didn't issue any fines or anything like that it's not a huge deal but i'd recommend that to also keep civil matters easier for you that we allow you to keep the driveway pretty much in the footprint that it is, except to replant where that blue is, and then replant in the mulched areas with my help. Okay, thanks, Jenny. And um, that way we could, once that's done, I say we could revisit the certificate of compliance. Okay. So we'll go around and make some comments. I, I will counter and say that I do think it's a big deal because these things were done without authorization. Yep. Um, so well, I mean... These things were not permitted. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree with you. I mean, now we were looking, to, uh, looking at this, there was some kind of, when we were working with the engineers and the, the contractors, we felt that, we thought there's some kind of communication going back and forth when we were doing this. And apparently, there wasn't. And uh, we, we are here without representative, because... Okay, well, I think we're on a good path, but let's, uh, mm -hmm. let's go around the table and, and hear what folks have to say. Um, yeah, no, um, I haven't seen the site. I didn't see it. I know what it, where it is. I'm very familiar with the, the house and everything. But I didn't, st I haven't been a part of this since the, its inception, so I'm going to pass on. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So I don't understand how this happens. I mean, if they're rebuilding the septic system and going up within the 50 foot buffer there, don't, didn't they need to get permits? They for did. Them? No, we got oh, so we permits one. from whom, though? From the Conservation Commission. They, they came to do us. what? To, do to what? install a new septic system. Their access was supposed to be this over here, on, and this is the activity over here. The ex access was supposed to be here. But during the meeting, the Commission asked repeatedly, well, why can't you go up through the driveway? It would be less disturbance than going up the hillside. And the issue there was a property line dispute that the that they might be encroaching. So we said, if you 
can go that way, it would be better. We didn't, I don't think we or they knew that there would be as much disturbance in going that way. I, we were told at time there was going to be, honestly, I remember, I distinctly remember being told by the engineer that it was going to be like a mini excavator going up there. When There's obviously it wasn't a mini wow. excavator. Wow. When, we saw, when we saw it, wow. we just couldn't believe it. Yeah, I right. mean, I. You, you did have yeah. an order of conditions that said um, no disruption, no changes to that footprint out front. Right? It said if you no. used it, you had to replace right. it. Right. Right. No, I, so, yeah. you know, it said so to repair and replace. Replace, so. Right, in kind. <laughs> And sitting s sitting today, I mean, there's no question, I mean, absolutely, but at the moment that we, everything was going on, we, like I said to Amy, we assumed that there was some communication going, and it, it, yeah. There okay, was. so I'm, I'm not trying to cast blame, I'm trying to understand what happened. Mm. So, um, We didn't get notified that the work was starting. But we had no uh, idea. Presumably a contract, again, it's a question of contractors yes. doing stuff that you know Absolutely. the contractors know or should know. When you said a name of a contractor, I'm not going to repeat it. They know. They know better. It's some, it's some, and they were very guys good. around it's here a big do, company. do septic systems. They deal with this sort of thing all mm -hmm. the time, right? And they do septic systems near resource areas and they know all of that stuff. Yeah. And we should have had the order yeah. of conditions on site. We, we never had to start work. Um, I didn't know this was done until after it was done. So there's some. So we thought my we question is, should the contractor in question be cited somehow? So they at well, least get some. I didn't know who it was until tonight. So and when, when you said who it was, I mean, we certainly can. Oh, they're excellent people. I mean, they really worked with us very closely. They yeah, worked together. Sure. It's, uh, they did a great job. But it's working uh, with us. And they they need to work with us. It's like by the engineers. It so it's and, and we didn't know. And we thought we thought we're doing everything right, basically. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're right. But that isn't the point. The, the conditions of the permit, and so they they seem like they did a great job. They actually didn't do a great job. Because you're here having to deal with uh, it. You shouldn't be here having right. to deal with it. Right, right. And they should have told you that you needed to come back and talk to Amy mm -hmm. before right. they could do this stuff. Mm -hmm. And we, it would have been simple, probably. And yeah. now it's yeah, just. No, I mean, yeah. Now it's just a pain in the neck. So, yeah. okay. I don't, I don't have anything else. When I looked at the drive, was the original driveway paved? It was. It was. The original one, because now it's it's a permeable driveway. What, what happened? I mean, you can see part of it; it fell apart after it so many asphalt. years. So it, it was. But it was asphalt. Yeah. It okay. was it was asphalt stony uh, so something of this. That was pervious. Yeah, so we yeah. yeah. And then the looks like, are those like black fence posts or whatever? In the, at the no at, at the your driveway link. at the. Chain link. Here? Yeah. 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 Yeah, th yeah. This so is. So that's a gate there to yeah, get the, out. Yeah, yeah. This was the no, old. That was so what I'm asking to the left part of that picture is where that blue triangle is that you're saying. Here, that, here. Yeah. Right? Like okay. yeah, like this. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we and put we also the yeah, stone because it, the dispute mm -hmm. finally it was resolved, but mm -hmm. it just mm -hmm. keep it quiet. It's quiet for the last. So that. So that part of your driveway isn't being used anyways because you couldn't drive over. Plus, that's that's gated well, off like, anyway. Right. So I mean, yeah, well, well, part of it that we yes. yeah that we have to push exactly. a little bit. So exactly. Yeah. So that's exactly. to to replant in right. that area would really be a benefit from and a conservation standpoint. It wouldn't bother the, the driveway at all. From right. Your don't use it and it will enhance obviously the area. Yeah. And actually, on the right side, those trees, those were, you must have planted, those are new trees and everything, right? No, 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 well, no, 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 this is the same tree. The same same tree. Oh, because in that picture, they don't look as nice. No, no, uh, because, uh, 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 no, I'll tell you why, because this is six years ago, five, uh, this is different okay. period. No, that's why. We, right. we took from different period. Uh, okay. The, yeah, yeah. That's all I have. Okay, if you look years before, there was like no trees. Do you have any comments? Um, yeah, like Amy's path forward of replanting the mulch areas and the blue shaded area with natives. And, um, I would be interested in talking about citing the contractor. It seems like it might be a, if we if we are able to do that, it, it's uh, 
yeah. good way to make some progress and not having this stuff ha keep happening. Yeah. That's all. Thank you. <coughs> does, does the um, footage of the blue area, which you plant that, uh, offset the footage of the pink area? Uh, well, it's, again, it's, this is about 95 feet. We had to calculate, you know, triangulate uh, some squares. This is about 75. I would say probably this is like 15 take a give because. But you're not, you haven't shown. So the area on the bottom left picture, Ernie, that it, he's showing the area from the boulders to the driveway. You're not showing the mulched area, which is what I was also going to include in the planting. So as additional planting there above the boulders. I see. All right. So I think it would be more than, All right. than what was district. I didn't realize that, uh, that your butters property came that close to the well that's one of the biggest yeah, your driveway. Yeah, that's the biggest problem and uh, as I said when we start construction yeah. the police was there every morning we were like they couldn't they had to drive just at all don't drive on this because I, I just yeah. where the road it. ends is the neighbor's property the yeah, road doesn't is. end at the water or anything it his property I mean that's what they claim I mean we don't dispute because we had yeah. more than enough yeah. <laughs> With this so. situation, we we live in peace somehow. Other comments? So, okay. So, um, I think everything sounds good in terms of the planting. I guess the species is important. I would like to see the mulch gone. It, it yeah, the, the mulch. I tell you something. This is my wife decided she to put the mulch because she thought it would be holding. I thought it was the right thing that the, the, right thing. the so dirt won't slide so onto she, the dry. So she. I was. I, Candles. She bought herself what you call it? I bought even a wheelbarrow. A wheelbarrow. And she was doing myself. herself for three days. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but as a no disturb zone, it's not something that we would have permitted. If yeah, no. Right. We, uh, no, now we, we glad it, So what we'll we thought do, we're doing the right. We do? We're doing the right yeah. stuff. We thought it would hold the. So when we talk about, and I'll call you later this week, either tomorrow or Friday. Um, what we'll talk about is not only the plantings, the shrub plantings, but. Um, most likely what you have to do is use a natural mat and use a natural seed and that will help stabilize this, the area bef uh, until the plants take over. Okay. So we'll t I'll tell you what types of seed and, and what not to get, but you use like a natural jute matting and seed with that. We'll, we'll go through all of it, don't worry. But Gwen. also Amy and Nicole emailed me a list of native plants. Native plants. 50 pages <laughs> and we'll also narrow that <laughs> also, yeah but also um, landscapers that yeah we have a list um, of the people who work in this a general area okay. so any chance of building up some density there that might actually function as habitat that's what I'm thinking not, not yeah ornamental type oh bushes. no it's not going to be ornamental but, um, you know, things that might grow in that bank naturally yep. provide habitat so well, I'm thinking too of a few things, native um, things for pollinators and stuff like that, because it is, I mean, the Belmont's right there. It's a very busy area, so it's kind of fragmented for large animals, mm -hmm. but certainly for small animals and pollinators, there can be some benefit yeah. here. So the only thing I will say, we don't have irrigation, so I'm not sure. I mean, we, we you put could do temporary yeah, yeah, we above. Did, we, we did it. We put uh, on the timer right. and, and towards. And so right now you are starting to get into a season where it's really not appropriate. Soon you're going to be not able to plant. It's going to get too hot, even with irrigation. Um, so we'll have to look at timing. It may be something that you seed it now and plant it in like September, because we don't want to put plants in if they're just going to scorch. So we'll talk about that. Okay. okay. So Nope, right? it's really just for them to come in okay. and explain what happens. I, is there a, a, an option of uh, issuing a fine to the contractor? I think there is. I don't. It, it, there's no limit to the time that you can do this, right? Well, we didn't know who the contractor was till today, so no, we can still do it. Okay. So then. Um, all right, then I'll, I'll move that we. I really hate to see him. The poor guy. I mean, he did a good job. And, uh, but he didn't follow he the didn't rules. Right. Our I, I rules. Think this could be a site where we issue a fine for each of these you know, 
different features. Th this to me is, you know, something that should have come back to us. And so, you know, you were probably out of town, maybe you didn't realize that, but either way, it's something that uh, should have come back. All, all these features needed to be permitted. We're starting to see oh, yeah. more and more contractors doing stuff against different the permit and you know everyone thinks it's it is ultimately the homeowner's responsibility but it is but it is the responsibility yeah. of the contractor and the better we're going to get better compliance if we're a little bit hard on them right now i mean they were good they were cooperative obviously they we worked together and well they, they it sounds good but there's a lot of things they didn't do mm -hmm. so yeah, I, you know it, it's you know, absolutely. They, they're well aware where they were working and, and what they should have communicated with. So, um, you know, you can't expect every homeowner to know the regulations as well as the contractors do. And so, I, I, I they're think they're the same pretty much in every town. So, regulations. So. Yeah, All right. I, I think that's. Um, I understand you'd like to protect your contractor at the same time. No, it's not mine. I'm, no, I'm. I, Obviously, we are. No, we didn't come. No, to we didn't. The point uh, of things. We, we come. We understand. We came to, to just to explain. Right. 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 I mean, right. uh, no, cum again, cumulatively, there's a there's a number of features here that would not have been authorized. No, no, well, you know, and 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 you're going to get to keep those features. So it, it's. Um, uh, we were, we so said we felt that we uh, when th this whole thing happened, we we were quite under pressure. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I move that we find the contract at $300 for that the cumulative unpermitted activities in the uh, 0 to 50. I'll second. So, oh, but second by Paul. 300 three, total? 300 total. It, it's, it's not a very large fine. It's, it's really a, a notice to notice. say that, that we view this as a situation that absolutely should have been communicated to the agent. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's, that's the importance there. Is the is it and you know who the contractor is, Amy? Is three hundred dollars going to have an impact on them, or are they big enough? You so that and I'm and we're not penalizing the them. You mentioned a name. I know who they are. No, um, uh, um, they've mentioned it a little earlier in the meeting. You may not have caught it. I did. Um, so, um, I think more than anything, it's going to be a record that we did it, mm -hmm. so that if it, things continue to happen, it's, it gets to be a bigger issue if they're not following permits. Yeah. Um, I will say for this company, it's a little unusual. I've not had a problem before um, that I know of. <laughs> so. Yeah, they're, they're legally responsible to follow the order of conditions. Sure. To accept that contract. Absolutely. So yeah. It's, that, you know, that's and a lot of other contractors who do follow the orders get frustrated with the companies that don't, you know. Cause, so. okay. It's really just to start okay. getting everybody. To so we have a second? Yes. Yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously, and so we'll see you shortly with the planting plan. And yeah, yeah. Yep. So thank, thank you for your time. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. I guess next we have a request for change of plans. Yeah, they are not present tonight. That's actually um, I had mentioned that to them. I want to check. I didn't have a chance to check on something before the meeting. I just want to check on it. Um, how, what they would like to do, this is 11 Shore Road. This is the old hotel that was right next to um, Pleasant Road Beach. Mm -hmm. um, that went from an oh, 11. Yeah. Yep. yeah, 11 bedroom hotel to a nine bedroom single family home. Right. <laughs> um, some of us went out to the site today. The, the plan doesn't really quite show the break in the slope as it should. Um, essentially, if you look at the, the plan between the wall that was there and is there now, um, the uh, basically decorative wall at the top and the revetment, right in the middle here, there's a pretty big divot. So it's very steep on the top side leading down to the divot, and then it's very shallow. So what they would like to do is, um, I spoke with Crawford Land Management and Sunbury Design, and Crawford's concerned that the steepness of the slope, which is not accurately shown on this, it's an architectural plan, is going to be a little difficult to pl pl have plants stay on mm -hmm. um, and do well. So what they're proposing is 
you can see it a little bit better here, but even this isn't perfect. They're proposing to add some fill in the middle there and still do all the previously approved plantings mm -hmm. on that slope. But because they are filling on a coastal bank, I thought it should come at least in front of you as a change in plan to make mm -hmm. it official. Um, it, again, it's the planting plan is going to remain the same. They're just adding, it, it says 6 to 12 inches of fill. I think it's more like in the middle, 12 to 24. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but still, I think the concept of stabilizing that, it, it's a revetted, um, bulkheaded s slope. It's nothing real natural about it. So. Um, I think, think this is a fairly modest request. They'll do the work from the top down, they'll dump the sand over. Anybody have any thoughts on that? I'm just going to check on the fire pit that we saw there today. Yeah. Let me to check that real quick. Hold on. Is, it, is the site all mobilized? And, like so the house is pretty much done. Yeah. Um, but th it's been working on for a year and they, a half they now. They keep those um, blueberry. Uh, Beach plums in the, the western corner. They were. It was a thicket of pitch pines there that they did keep. I thought there was some. No, you're thinking of Walder Road. Oh, jeez. But yes, okay. similar situation. Yeah, though, tear down and rebuild. that corner. Okay. Yeah. We had a question. You're absolutely right about what I'm thinking about. <laughs> How scary is that? I know. <laughs> <laughs> We've been working together um, for a little while. So we do have the approval for because it was in the. Footprint of the house, the terrace with the fire pit, but the area we did see something with some gas, gas, yes. gas lines. A gas line it's like closer to the bank. Actually. Yeah, it's yeah. right near the. Um, so it'll be something. I'll, it's not finished. It's a um, a gas line that's kind of. It's in the end of that sitting wall. Right over here. Yeah. No, like it's in the end of the wall. Oh, actually, it did no, look in like the end of the wall. wall. It looks like maybe the starts of some sort of outdoor kitchen. Outdoor yeah, kitchen. Right. So yeah. I'll jump on that tomorrow. Um, that's not permitted. Oh, those yeah. irrigation lines too, those pipes, you remember by the? Yeah, we saw sleeve. these irrigation sleeves that said sleeves. irrigation sleeves, but it was on the granite terrace and it was like wired. Right, but it was abutting the building. Is so it, it for might something? might be for like planters or something. I don't know, but I, know, I will but ask those questions right. tomorrow. Um, good thing is, is we caught it before things are done, so. Mm -hmm. but. Um, you said the fire pit. The fire pit is approved. Oh, okay. Um, that was in the footprint of the previous building. The uh, yeah, granite terrace and the fire pit was approved. Um, so we would need a vote for the change in plan for the fill. Well, if there's no further questions, I would move that we accept the change of plan request. Second. Second. Those. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Um, want to bang out the orders of conditions? Mm -hmm. Sure. We have two. Um, oh, we don't have Red, red River. Still don't have Red River. Okay. I'm working with um, our t new town engineer on classifying that landform, which I believe is a coastal bank with technically a clifftop dune at the east end of Red River Beach. Um, the state wants to make sure it is not pure dune, because otherwise it, it wouldn't look, the ever abutment wouldn't be allowed there. So that is where it's on us now. They've kicked it back to us to determine the exact land form. Huh. Is that Just to let you know where it is. We have to contract that out? No, um, it's myself and the um, town engineer mm -hmm. who are going to submit borings of the area, which is basically upland fill that we placed there over years, <laughs> mm. um, plus some beach rakings and things like that. So um, they'll, they may dispute it, and we'll go from there. Yep. That's where we're at. Um, so Three Davis Lane? Mm. I have no comments on Three Davis Lane. We had a 
benchmark in here. Oh, there it is, number five. Yep. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Good question, though. Sometimes I forget those. Well, there's a lot. There are a lot of special conditions in this one. Yeah. Okay. There was something that, that came up at the hearing for uh, for Three Davis Lane um, okay. that it seems like it sometimes is unclear that, you know, when you have a resource mm -hmm. and then you do mitigation plantings at a certain point, that the, to me, that the, that area is in a no disturb zone. You can't do anything in there after that. We should probably um, say not just this this area mitigation area is not just a mitigation area, but shall be a no disturb zone. Well, I mean, it's in, it's in a no disturb zone. It being within the 50 foot, and once you plant mitigation plantings, to me, that that. But maybe we could make it clear. Can't be can't be disturbed. But I'm not, that's not exactly crystal clear in our regulations. Right. And and Stephanie brought up that uh, yeah. she was a little confused as to whether or not they could maintain and prune and yep. do things. Um, I mean, to me, the regulation the regulations are pretty clear. I mean, if you're in a no disturb zone and it's not lawn or some pre-existing thing, it, you can't do work in there without permission. Mm -hmm. um, Anyway, that's something that there appears to be a little bit of confusion on. We might want to solidify that a little bit in the regs. Yeah, I think over time we've allowed some activities if it was pre-existing disturbance. Well, yeah, if it's, um, I mean, if you already have lawn there, then it's just allowed. But when, once you Naturally plant uh, pull back. a buffer strip, yeah. yeah, that is the should be the edge of a no disturbed zone. Yeah, I don't think that's come up a lot. Yeah. It, it came up on this one because we were, we, we have uh, the mitigation is landward of some beds that were probably yeah. mitigation plantings a long time ago. I, I would say we strive to make that reclaim no disturbs. Yeah, uh, yeah and that, that is basically clarified in this order of conditions, but it was just, it, it might be something that should be a little bit solidified in the, in the regs. Correct. Well, we can definitely, I mean, tonight I only put the section on lawns in there, but in the future we can definitely talk about that section, the no disturbed zone section. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been noticing now that I'm familiar with this, you, you see what were obviously mitigation plantings and a lot of properties, you, you know, the sweet pepper bush, and a lot of the times they're mowing in between them. Oh, yeah. And they're just, you know, it's, it's still good that they're there. But it didn't become part of a naturalized no disturb right. zone. And then when you have a change in ownership, the new owners <coughs> do what they want to do. Yeah. So yeah. we're not just we're not just we're looking in the newspapers. By the way, we find out when properties change hands, right. and we send them a welcome to the neighborhood letter. Oh, that's, that's, that's good. <laughs> Nikki, give her credit. Nikki You're started doing that a while ago. Oh, wow. We actually look at the real estate listings, find the ones that are located near wetlands, and we send them a letter. Good idea. Yeah. Introducing some folks, ourselves. Some oh, folks great. don't know. Yeah. Other yeah. folks don't care. Well, in case the realtors don't say anything. Yeah. Yeah. But actually, we have gotten some phone calls from new owners saying, hey, we got your letter. We'd like to talk to you about doing such and such. And we're like, that's great. Okay. That's yeah. worth it. So. All right. Any comments on those two? I don't have any. Okay. Okay. Um, you do both together? Yeah, I, I move that we approve the uh, order of conditions for both um, Three Davis Lane and One Wawa Tacy Road. I'll second. Seconded by Paula. All those in favor say aye. 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 Please sign them and send them around. Two.
you know, no nothing incredibly earth shattering to share with you, but we should do one. Okay. We have a light agenda going on there for an update. Hopefully. All right. Yeah. Well, I got both of you. <laughs> okay, uh, what's up next? Request. This is for three Littlefield. Yep. Um, the, everything's done. The house has been built. Um, they want to add a few more plantings and let a little more time for their, their plantings that they did put in for mitigation need to establish a little longer. So um, they would just like a one year extension for that. And it's only been valid for three years. This is up in the northwest corner of town, like on the Harwich Brewster yep. Dennis line. Mm -hmm. Any comments or? He's doing, a, he's doing a good job. He just wants yeah. to, he actually wants to do more plants. I'll make a motion to approve the request for extension of order of conditions for three Littlefield Pond Road. Seconded. All those in favor say aye. Who seconded? Aye. aye. I did. Okay. Yep. Motion carries. All right. Go for them. Um. Can I just talk about two of the certs that I'm not recommending at this time? Yeah. So the first one is the LaCrosset, um, Building Modifications and Vegetation Management. It's two orders of conditions. We did not get an as-built, which was as required. This was a really big plan. Um, so without that, I cannot re make any recommendation to you. So you don't have to vote on tabling it um, until the next meeting, but it will be on the next agenda. Mm -hmm. And then Peter and Lisa Hennessy, um, overlooking Winchmere Harbor, dredging in a dock. Um, again, there we are waiting for an as-built plan. Mm -hmm. um, they did their shellfish mitigation. They um, elected to have us do the mitigation for them. Um, so they paid us the allotted amount, um, 2,000, oh, for over, so $6,000 total. Um, so that's approximately the cost for 30 bushels a year of a mixed class. Three years, sorry. Um, and Heinz um, used that for proceeding of Winchmere Harbor. So we'll put this on um, for June 19th temporarily. Um, hopefully they can get us an as-built or dredge plan by then. All right. Um, the last one we can recommend in on the beach mm -hmm. uh, site work and remodel Nikki did the site visit Tuesday um, the only thing is instead of foundation plantings around the buildings which were going to be ornamentals anyways they have like these planters in like in planters so it's very it's a very minor thing so we recommend a certificate of compliance for in on the beach thank you move that we accept the typical clients for 16 Bank Street. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Passing that around. Um, I did make Mr. Kukunis aware that we were having, I talk, called him before I left on vacation and let him know that we were meeting tonight. He's not here. What's his concerns on this? He is the lessee of Great Swamp Bog and Main Street Bog. Okay. He leases them from us. And well, not, is not anymore with uh, Well, not anymore for Great for Swamp. Great That's Swamp, done. Yeah. Um, June 1st, that expired. Yeah. He just wanted to be an active part, and we went and visited the sites, an active part of the discussion on what the commission's future plans are for the properties, especially if we were to not grant renewal so he's a lessee, but he's not actively. Well, he is actively working Main Street Bog. Okay. And that has multiple uses. So we had a pretty productive meetings, I would say. Um, and I think we should wait I mean, to what, what Great Swamp Bog is already expired. Um, from what I took out of it, he didn't seem as concerned about right. Great Swamp Bog staying under agricultural lease. It actually, even though it's under a lease, it has not been worked in over five years, so it does not have an agricultural exemption, the wetlands. Um, but he was more concerned about the future for Main Street Bog. 
um, which does not expire until 2021 or 2022. Um, so yeah, I got a couple th things just to sure. about that. So in, in managing uh, Great Swamp and, and kind of all the properties, yeah. it, it, it seems like we don't necessarily have any funding really to to do that. And I don't think there's necessarily a lot that needs to be done, but um, some fencing and some signage and maybe some gates um, are, the, are the main things that certain properties need in certain areas. Um, yeah, maybe some surveying and some enforcement of yeah. violations that once we have a town surveyor, maybe that can happen. But um, I, I'm wondering if we should consider a small uh, CPA request just, for, just to get like a Started. stockpile of some split rail fence have the ability to buy up a couple gates. Is that our um, obligation or whoever's leasing the bars? But, uh, uh, that, I'm talking about all of our properties, really. Um, no, not and, just uh, the one, not the ones that are actively leased. The only one that's actively leased is Main Street, which doesn't really have those issues necessarily. So why would we need to fence the other ones then? Um, well, it's we have a lot of uh, encroachment and uh, vehicle use unauthorized vehicle use and i'm not I'm, in town. I'm not talking about uh we did some that that so far has been pretty effective at uh mm. bell's neck a few weeks ago yep just just four small sections it's almost like uh <clears throat> just uh just to say that we're paying attention yep. that don't drive here um mm -hmm. so it's just a little bit of split rail fence here if you look at hct properties they do a great job with that it's, and it's not like you're fencing the properties it's just uh there was an old cartway here it's occasionally used that uh, they'll put a two mm -hmm. sections of split rail left um we do have um and in the past it was kind of used primarily by the trails committee which is now really not active mm -hmm. um was decommissioned but we were still kind of meeting for a while we actually do have um, we have got an additional $2,500 to do that. So we do have a little bit of money well, to we'll start. A little bit of funding, yeah. Yep, certainly um, fencing. I usually, highway usually has some extra that we ask for too. Well, okay, you know. Uh, it's uh, nice to have our own. What happened at Bell's Neck, I mean, if it was really effective, it probably wasn't the right thing to use aesthetically. It's um, not that that's really our, you know, it was very effective that preventing I don't think anyone's driven on there since nope. the fencing has been put in but no. it, you know um, it probably should have been some short sections of split rail which would have um, it, it's an area people go to view wildlife and take photos and whatnot and now we have these pressure treated things with big yeah. orange triangles <laughs> on, which, which maybe can come off but uh, yeah I did not we did not specify the orange triangles <laughs> but um you know what, Jim? You know what I'd like to do is um, I'd like to find a future meeting to have an hour. Yeah. So we can get this topic. You know, we can. Um, we have to, I think, formally declare that we're not going to lease Great Swamp. I think that there should be yeah. there should be a vote. There should be a discussion and a vote on that. That we we really have to devote some time towards the Herring River bogs, and and then I think your suggestion is fantastic. <coughs> Amy could look into maybe funding sources. I can give you, I can let you know what we have. Um, yeah, I know, we have a know. certain line item for land management, yep. which we use a f for a few things, like tilling of the gardens and things like that. And yeah. But um, but yes, I can let you know what I our know funding the, is. The, the, uh, you know, the CPA funds are available, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I don't think it would be a very large amount. I mean, my, because DPW can do a lot of the installation yep. work, um, right. so. But I do think we need to tackle the big questions and really do it formally. What is the future of, of Herring River Bogs? Mm -hmm. um, formalize that we're not going to put Great Swamp out to lease. And probably not the 19th, because we probably don't have the time on the agenda. Well, we'll put it on if we don't okay. get to. I, I'd hesitate, I mean, because you never know. Some things may look full, but then right. we've had hearings where everything drops off, and all of a sudden we're out of here at 8.30. Right. So I, I, I'd rather I put it on. And I think we do need an hour. I, I think yeah, we absolutely. Need a good chunk yeah. of time yeah. and, and have everybody engaged. <coughs> Mark isn't here tonight. He has a yeah. big interest. And um, maybe I can put together a list of our major chunks of land for you and like map and send it off to you. Yeah. Okay. Some people I think are a little more familiar with most of our land than others. All right. Um, one other quick item that that uh, mowing at Bell's Neck is. Uh, <laughs> 
that neighbor who mows yeah. extensively did it again. Like I told him six it. feet wide, most at most. That's what yeah. we had said, right? Who is it? Ron. Ron. Yeah. Um, is he doing the, the section to the north there? To the south. The south is where. Okay. We're north. near where he is. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I. For a footpath, or what's the purpose? How how wide is it? Probably. In places, it's probably 40 feet. I mean, he oh, probably mowed over I an, told an acre him plus. I, I stood in front of him and told him six feet. And he, so. Um, yeah, so that, that's something okay. we need to take I mean, uh, you know, and I, I mean, I don't even know whether it's appropriate to have volunteer mowing on town property or not, but I, mean, I don't yeah, really have any problem. Maybe problems. for next year, we could at least get highway on their yeah. rotation to do it every couple weeks. Just the one thing squat. is, if you're doing a six foot footpath, it, it won't need to be mowed because it gets so it. much traffic. Yeah. It won't even be. It, it kind of doesn't need to be mowed, but he seems to like to create this like lawn out there. I know. I I will talk to him. But there was I probably quite a bit of uh, he did you know uh, things that were killed in that mowing. I mean, it's the time of year where everything's nesting yeah. and snakes and turtles yep. and everything. There's okay. a lot we have to tackle. Uh, yeah. The gates. Herring run season gate, so I, I think let's give it a good chunk. Mm -hmm. and I think we have an obligation to do it within a couple of months, you know, because I, I think it's been out there for a while. Yeah. Tonight I'd love to finish the, the long legs. Right. Yep. Yeah, yeah, let's. Mm -hmm. we could, um, Should, can we do the minutes first? And then what I'll do is um, I put the change, I emailed you the changes to lawn regs. I didn't print many out for myself, so I can make a copy and then whoever else wants a copy. Yeah, I've got a copy here. Let's do the minutes. Can we do the minutes first? Sure. Do you mind? Nope. Two sets. <coughs> do uh, November 19th first. The old one's out of the way. <laughs> Trying to catch up from the old one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wrote some here. Oh, let's hear that. Well, you mean if you catch any typos, I'd like to know. Oh, okay. But <laughs> in favor, while you're doing that, um, if, if there are any changes, can somebody write them down? I'm going to go print out. Who wants a copy of the uh, lawn regs that I um, just have one section? I've got yeah. yeah, yeah. We want to, I'll make a couple. It's the same as what you sent. It's right? the same as what's in yeah. Dropbox, but some people, yeah. I've got no. Does anybody right. want? I can look at it in here. Right, you. Jim, do you have oh, it? I'm okay, yeah. I've got it on there. Well, don't grocery it for me. Mm -hmm. I need one. Don't, oh, okay. <laughs> Give me, if there's changes to the minutes, please okay. take note of them. Yep. I'll be right back. Let me know if there's any changes. <clears throat> Changes to November 19th. What is Is it May 15th or March 15th, the other one? It's May. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You making, you taking changes, Brad? Um, I think Paula yeah, is. Oh, Paula, it. okay, on, on the May 15th one. Yeah. It was on page two under the uh, powers, the three Davis Lane notice of intent. Yeah. Down in the middle, it's a sentence that says, Ketchum is concerned with that maintenance of hydrangeas. It's, I think that that should be the. Okay. Hmm. That's 
the only thing I saw in there. Business, I would just mention <clears throat> that uh, when it says that I went to the Waterways Committee, mm -hmm. just write down that it was that night. Okay. And that uh, we also discussed docks dredging oh. and regulations. They were very keen about talking to us about dredging too, trying to find ways to. Docks, dredgings, and regulations. I guess Amy didn't know about this, but we've been invited to attend on the 19th. I think it came out of like a dinner party that Carolyn attended. I haven't heard the story yet. So where she met one of the waterways people. So it's on the agenda. So we'll-, we'll The conservation has been invited? Yes, so when Amy comes back, I think we'll, oh. we'll talk about it. I feel obliged to go. What's the topic? They, they're interested in looking at um, dock regulations and possible changes to make things more practical and maybe allow dredging to occur when it might be more practical. So it hasn't been thoroughly vetted as to what they're interested in. The regulations go through this commission. They're advisory. So, I, I think that um, it's not really certain. But I think better coordination is a good idea. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. so, and I think that whoever really wants to go can go. It's going to be 5 o'clock on the evening. Sorry. While we're going over that, Amy, uh, I just gave them a quick briefing on the June 19th meeting with Waterways. Oh, yeah. Carolyn apparently talked to Matt Hart at a dinner party, and all of a sudden there was an agenda item to meet at 5 o'clock on the okay. 19th. <laughs> so Bye. I guess you didn't hear about that. Um, so the Carolyn sent out an email saying, you know, this is going to happen on the 19th. I assume that you were involved in that. I will have to check. It may have come out when I was not here yeah. and um, I may have missed it. But yeah. I, yeah, that's so fine. I can do that. I'll just. It, uh, yeah, I, I think it's pretty informal. <laughs> I think it's um, the chairman, Matt Hart, wanting to get some coordination and discussion on you know, regulations and. Well, it's about what he wanted to meet for for a few minutes the last meeting, right? Right. right. But we just said it can't be accomplished in such a short time. No, he, he included the Oyster Reef project and like three other things. Oh. And so it's it's quite a, a topic. He, yeah. he he wants to, I guess, just get better coordination with the, the committees. That's on a good thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. So I guess I'm going to go along. Maybe you could find out if it's real. Yes, this the minute. You can have this. I'll take that one. This, this and then the agenda Brad. Item went that same day and they also discussed docks, dredging, okay. and regulations. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Thank so you. once this becomes concrete, you will, someone will send a notice to the rest of us so we know what's going on. Well, if we're going to have a quorum there, I got to post it too. If, if oh, everybody's right. coming at five, I need to know well in four days in advance. Okay. They invited me last time just as the chair, yeah. and I attended, and then he forgot that he invited me, and so <laughs> they, just, they were surprised that I showed up. <laughs> so we talked for like 10 minutes, and I said, well, let's let's have a, a discussion later. It's a little more formal. Yeah. And, it, it, and 10 minutes is just ridiculous to take on that many different topics. Yeah, so you can't do it. I no, think, um, but I, I think it's a really good concept, reaching out to have better coordination, so mm -hmm. whoever wants to attend sure. should feel Go free to be here. It might result in a subcommittee or something down the road. All right. Do we need to vote on the minutes? Uh, yeah, if you already have it, yes, please. Everyone's good? The yeah. minutes? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to motion that we approve the minutes for November 19th and March or May 15th, 2019. I'll second. Second by Paul. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. 
wands. I also did make, I didn't print them out, this is what the printer and I were arguing about. Um, like two pages earlier, I made some changes about sod. They're just oh, yeah. conceptual thoughts. We don't have <laughs> to do that today. Actually, all of this is kind of conceptual, but I did um, do a little bit of language alteration on section 1.06 lawns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I thought this is like exactly what we had in there. I, mean, I, I don't know what I, I just, I, it was my fault somehow yeah. it was my fault um. so I have a comment about this which to me is sort of a larger issue about people in town understanding what the rules are yeah. and right as Jim said this looks like what we all thought we did last fall but reading it again and having had some conversations with some citizens who were wondering what yeah. what the rules really are, it's a little confusing. And I think it's confusing because we can only impose this, these restrictions on... Within our little area. Well, within a resource area, and only when we're dealing with changes, right? And I think that right. has to be stated very clearly, otherwise people are just confused because I have talked to people who, who had it in mind and thought they heard it from somebody here that that's a rule, period, town-wide. No fertilizers, no insecticides, no chemicals within 100 feet of the pond, and while that might be great and maybe we should talk about getting from where we are closer to that objective. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if we, can, can we do that? I don't know, that would other be a question for council. It's well, yeah. it's been pointed out to me that other towns around be, here have made yeah. restrictions that are way it tighter. It may be than a we bylaw have. though, not a reg. I, I it's been done both ways actually. Okay. Um, and I only just started looking into it, but I just, for this yeah. specific thing, I think it just has to be crystal clear that for projects that come before the for commission. projects that come before the commission, right. properties that come right. before the commission. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So that, that could be added to the. Yep. And another concern that I've got, we, when you talk about underground irrigation systems, both in that prior section on turf. Amy, as well as under 106. Which I think we should combine those sections anyways. Uh, perhaps, yeah. But you reference them as being lawful irrigation system. I don't know what that is. Meaning, so I was, I, this is what I thought about this for a while, because oftentimes we get properties that have irrigation systems. Mm -hmm. We don't know if they went in, well, we I, knew they went in a long time ago. I've got it in my property. Yeah. I can't tell you it's lawful, right. lawful. I don't know what, I don't so know what I, I didn't know what to do with that, and that's why I actually it's good we're talking about it, because, I mean, if something's been there for 20 years, sometimes we let it stay. If something is, but if something's been there for a few, usually we have to have them take it out or something like that, so. You reference the act? Yeah, I mean, it, it really does, it's post-78. Um, yeah. So unless we, it was permitted, pre which existing Pre-existing to the act or permitted under the act or permitted yeah I mean but you're gonna find that and none the act is none 78? Of them are. 1978 yeah. yeah it started in the 60s okay. the very basic rudimentary yeah. parts of the act well, again let's go let's go back to 78 to is the year my but, property but the 78 I don't think 78 probably included no irrigation they didn't it but did. it was an alteration within the 100 foot buffer so technically it would have required a permit so should we go back to the um, bylaw the bylaw uh, change um, yeah i mean i think a lot of projects were approved in howrich in the in probably the 80s and 90s with, no condition with, with the irrigation yeah. so I, I would say those are lawful projects um, and you know, uh, the only thing that would not be a lawful project yeah. would be a house th Some that the order of conditions didn't Some provide for that or it was prohibited. And that's really a recent reg change. So probably to go back to that reg change where we tightened but, it up. But I don't know that we would have included that in an order of conditions in, say, pick a year, 2004. 
Yeah, may, maybe well, not. I, I, I agree, but I, I think that there's a there's a definite change in our regs that I think we can look up. Yeah. It, and I'm going to say it was probably seven, eight years ago that I, I was involved in that. <coughs> I, I think we started to say, okay, any new projects. It was when I, you know, we, I first started here. Yeah, maybe. maybe yeah. yeah. So if someone can prove but that, that was for that new was projects that came before the commission. Right. Yeah. So somebody building a house right. and putting in the irrigation. Need a permit. I needed a permit? It didn't have or it wouldn't be allowed. Right. Um, um, I think we can find that reg change and, and use that date. And um, right, because we, yeah, we can't go back to the 78 on this. No. But there's nothing wrong with this saying. Yeah, and anybody that can prove they had their irrigation in Yours before might have been allowed. Our there was bylaw there was a lot came of into effect. Thought from the commission um, for many years. When was that? Um, there was a lot of people pro irrigation, approximately um, which there are benefits okay. to yeah. irrigation. You don't have an order yeah. that um, said no helps keep things alive. Right. Those but it's in the yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which that's that's fine. Right? Fairly recently. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay, a little complicated, right. but it makes sense. So, how, what makes sense? To have two clauses in there instead of lawfully permitted say that um, it, it had to have been um, occurred before that regulation change that specifically said we're not going to allow it anymore or um, it was not um, prevented by the uh, existing order of condition. Okay. Because I bet there's some that go before that reg change where we have real sensitive yeah. you know, yeah. buffer zones and we just said can't put an irrigation. Yeah. And I, I'm sure my whole tenure we've had cases like that. So before reg change, you're not prevented by previous order of condition. Yep. Okay. okay. I'll, I'll change this and send it to you. Um, one, uh, one thing on the lawn part, the, uh, after everything about the uh, fertilization and chemicals, as uh, considering I should say any reseeding yeah. shall be done with only Thanks. native grass seed mixtures as approved by the Conservation Commission. Because the, the idea is that these lawns will become a, a more natural lawn with a mixture of species and mm -hmm. a, a Cape Cod lawn. That sort of thing. <coughs> and they may find with certain lawns that they have to do that, like the lawn will start dying because of the species it is right. and they'll have to overseed with a uh, Something a or something, yeah. whatever. Right. <clears throat> and John, um, I, I, John, I like your idea of revisiting it for the whole jurisdictional area. I, you know, this is another conversation I think that it. we should have, and part of that would be looking at what other towns have done, and I know the towns of Chatham and Orleans and maybe Brewster have taken pretty aggressive approaches, and the town of Chatham, they did a regulation um, without a bylaw change, I think, based on uh, s Department of Health okay. statutes, Massachusetts Department of Health. Some, and I was reading that; it didn't make a lot of sense to me that they could make that leap. But I, right. don't, I don't. I'm hardly. It's been done. Yeah. Could uh, you guys help and maybe pick a town and look mm -hmm. into things? Mm -hmm. Their regulations yeah, I, on I, lawns would be helpful. Right. Uh, and even aside from moving forward and maybe trying to get to a place where we're doing a bylaw thing or something, would is it possible for us, the commission, to just write an advisory notice, like oh, yeah. about just suggesting to people what they should be doing? We can't tell them they must, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and it would there would be two parts to it. In my view, one part is. In the recent, you know, in the buffer zones, and the other part is everybody else who aren't in the buffer zone. You're, you know, you're committed to spending how many millions of dollars is it right now? I don't, I don't, I don't remember right. the number. Whatever it is, uh, you know, and part of the reason is all this fertilizing and dumping on the lawns. Right. Here's what you should consider doing instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, and I think it is important to give people yeah. alternatives, which a lot of that is going to come into picking appropriate plants. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, we we can do that. Um, how, I don't know how you'd want to advertise it if it's in the paper or if it's. You, you, you could, there, it could be a PDF that people uh, that's just in your department's oh, okay. 
our web page. People click on it. I don't do think that's online. the only way to do it, but that's one yeah. online and maybe uh, go on Channel 18 with an interview. And, uh, what about the something on, in the Chronicle or something yeah, like right. that? Yeah, right. There's Just a conservation whatever. column in the Chronicle now. Yeah, I don't know who writes that. Editor. That stuff to be, this topic is, is old news and I think it's, it's not going to resonate as strongly. Um, I think the advisory might be good and then have like a forum that we invite in landscaping companies. Um, but what I'd like to do is couple that with a proposal to have no fertilization in our jurisdiction. And so maybe it doesn't pass. Maybe it'll be a little controversial. Look at what other towns have done and try to synthesize something that would make sense yeah. in Harwich yeah, yeah. and that might work. Have you heard what Marblehead did? They, with the public health in Marblehead, they have town-wide ban, not even right. just jurisdictional areas. Organic only. Well, so that's what's happened in Ch Ch Chatham and Orleans. I, I mean, I I just looked at some of these things very quickly uh, yesterday, uh, but they're saying no, no application at all between sometime in the fall and sometime in the spring, which seems like it's sort of a common sense thing that people would but do anyway. Not. But who the heck knows? Right. Uh, and you know, just. They're trying to tighten things up in various ways, yeah. and I, I think there are things about only using organics as well. I it's, will say I've had a lot of conversations with the health department, and there is a renewed energy to try to do something a little uh, bit more uh, town wide. I remember uh, that Heinz committed to yeah. leading a group to do this as a condition for approving Hinkley's Pond. That's right. Yeah, and <laughs> I'll tell you I'll some remind of, them well, of that. Yeah. <laughs> some <laughs> of the Hinkley's people are pretty Yeah. Um, they're pretty aggressive about this. They want to just turn off all the fertilizer well, they there and because wanted hmm. me to come to their uh, meeting. I gave them a bunch of information. I couldn't go to their association meeting, but I gave them a ton of information about impacts of chemicals and also suggested changes and things like that just for their association and they loved it so they would definitely be people who would be willing to help with some language type stuff if we were to go they're, they're great yeah I would just say let's go for it and, and not just have an educational piece but combine it with a regulation proposal yeah. um, it seems the other audience that we need to target, though, is the landscaping companies themselves. Yeah. With a with a notice. Put them on notice. Right. Yes, bring, absolutely. Bring them to the hearing by having a proposed regulation change at the same time. Yeah, you can invite them. Yeah. Know about it. I, I so think many. We might not be successful with that reg change. No, but I, but if we sent them a letter saying that you know we're we are targeting yeah. application of this and we'll start imposing fines. For violations, mm -hmm. uh, at least because the, ho the homeowners that use these companies, they don't know. They hire. They hire. They don't know what they're doing with their lawns. Right. They just say, "I want a golf course out there." They they've been mowing, you know, for at least a month with, before people come down. Yeah. And they're just at applying and mowing, and and I, you've heard me say this before. You know, you see it around mid-May with a big rain event. The harbors turn colors that they didn't mm -hmm. turn 20 years ago. Yeah. It's remarkable what's happening fairly recently. I, I, I keep wondering, like, because fertilizer is engineered to fertilize, and I, and I think that it might have an even more dramatic effect than nitrogen just going through the mm -hmm. sand and the groundwater. I mean, fertilizer is engineered to you right. know, create rapid growth. And Phytoplankton, too. What, when it mm -hmm. runs in, in large amounts, I mean, I think it might have an oversized effect on those algae blooms. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, it's it's definitely a, a phenomenon that's really increased recently. <coughs> so yeah, let's um let's dig in. I, I think it's a great topic, and but I would just say let's go for, you know, what we really want. And I and I think um, research in other towns is a good place to start. Cool. That's <laughs> the uh, same with me. Do you know the organization? Uh, what was it? Protect Cape Cod Aquifer. Association Reserve Cape Cod. Oh, P P Protect our Cape Cod Aquifer. Yes. Th yeah. They've been uh, go apparently going around to a lot of the conservation commissions and trying to get regulations like these passed. Um, I wonder if we, we, they seem to have a lot of information. They seem to like kind of yeah. try and facilitate the whole thing. Um, they probably would 
like to make a presentation? They made one to the Board of Health. Um, they came to us probably about two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, some of their stuff, and a lot of their stuff is really great, but some of their stuff you have to check the facts a little it's bit. Too, it's too much, yeah. Yeah, we have to check the facts a little. Um, but I, I'd be happy to invite them if you'd like them to come. Um, actually, Association of Preserve Cape Cod, which is the oldest land, um, basically environmental nonprofit, has a lot of information um, on their website about this type of stuff too. Yep. Let me ask a practical question for tonight. Um, do we want to vote on the, these, this language right before us, or do we want to go for it and, and craft language that would be for the whole jurisdiction? Um, or, or I think, think there's enough changes that I, before you vote on it, I want you to see it one more time. Okay. I also um, would like to add, because we don't specifically state, I mean, our regulations state that floodplain is our jurisdiction, mm -hmm. but when reading this, people are going to think it's within a 100-foot buffer zone of a wet, actual wetland. Yeah. So I would think another flip, uh, if, if you saw fit, another bullet that says this includes not just within the wetlands and 100 foot buffers but also within the floodplain well that's a good way to increase river, river, the river that's front. a big area let's go <laughs> riverfront too or oh yeah riverfront yeah this the could, be, foot river could just be area. anywhere in our jurisdiction are you uh, going to police it uh, well it might you know that's not never 100 percent, but it's something we can at least it's something you can pin it on yeah it's gonna and be hard you to could check it. on whether What's the vehicle to go that extra regulation? Is it a reg? Is yeah, it a I can ask. Um, we can look so at other towns, but I'll definitely I have ask some council. Town information, which specifically their regulation references Mass State Law as the basis for a regulation that is being promulgated by the Health Department in uh, Chatham, which um, be interested to see restricts it. the use of chemicals. Right, and you said Orleans, and I know yeah. Orleans is pretty forward in this too. So if maybe they, we get some had, they did a bylaw, they did a bylaw change. So, um, yeah, I mean, if people could help and pull some information together from different towns, I'll send you the stuff. That'd be great. Okay. Um, what? Anything else tonight, Amy? I got a couple minor things. Yeah. Um, I have a couple. Go okay. Ahead. Go ahead. I'll fire away. They're, they're really just potential violations. Um, oh, great. The, the I, I, I might know, know them because know. we <laughs> have a few on the docket. Yeah. The Skidikwit Boathouse, it looks to me oh. like it's a bigger footprint than what we've got. Oh, actually, I'm going there Friday. Yeah. Take a look. Look. Looks. I'm, yeah, I'm going there Friday for because um, a pre. Oh, good. A pre uh, sort of compliance request. I, I, I hope I'm wrong, but it, it looks to me like it's bigger than it is. All right. And, and then, um, two on Aquavini's. Um, what is the status of the fence that, um, you know, on the brook there? Yeah. What, what happened? On the other side of the, oh, the fence, we have not, they were supposed to take it out. We have not heard from them. Well, they have So taken that is out. our, have we are on, we're going to be on them. I was talking to Nikki them? about it. We did find them. Oh. And they paid it. Okay, but they haven't, but they taken, haven't it taken it out. But they haven't taken it out. Okay. So find them again? <laughs> I don't think I gave them a deadline because they just said, we'll take it out. Take it out. And the last one is at the end of Uncle Vini's, um, that, that small house in the marsh. Yep. I, I did see the fertilizer pellets, and I felt like the, the lawn was pushing past the work limit. Um, oh, is this the new house? Yeah, the new house. Yeah, That's I got the one with the irrigation. Anyway with the irrigation. Yeah, so yeah. did they? Oh, they weren't, they weren't supposed to have any ground irrigation? No. But was there uh, was there a waiver for early fertilization to get the lawn started or I not? will check. It's, it's in ground though, John. It's permanent irrigation. Well, yeah, not, yeah, but I'm wondering about the fertilization. Yeah, that was a waiver that, for that. that. Right in the marsh like that. You know, I don't think we would have set a one time even for that. No, yeah. not for lawn. Yeah, yeah well, the grass there has clearly been. Yep. No, it's been on my yeah. radar. Yeah. Got to get down there. Yeah, I'm I know it's making food too. Blown away. And Brad, you know that they've got in ground irrigation at Sacquatucket now, too, right? <laughs> Found that out all around the park. You, it was going off as we drove by. <laughs> all right, another <laughs> violation that's going to be coming to you next time on Riverside Drive um, extensive activities within the 200 foot riverfront area. Um, 
that we're coming to next time. Oh okay. boy. And there's a couple that we need to follow up on violations still from the winter time that they said they hired people. I've met with a contract or uh, engineers like Lovers Lane, the trees on Lovers Lane that got oh, cut. Yeah. Met with the house? yeah, met with the landscape architect like two months ago and I haven't heard anything, so I'm trying to just try to get more people moving. The whole idea was to have them be able to plant this spring, you know. Yeah. So maybe deadlines should be imposed. The deadlines often. we did. I mean like for yeah. the one tonight where I said the deadline was March thirtieth for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you did we're very bad. Sorry. I was no, don't that be one. sorry. You were right. So start the uh, per day fines yeah. uh, at the end of the deadline. That right. Be, yeah. Yeah. Um, Incentive. <laughs> so if you haven't already gotten notice of it, the One Cape Conference at the Waquasset is going to be in July. Um, it was fabulous last year. Yeah. One of the days was more environmental than the other. The other was more like community, like planning type. Um, but I'll send it over yeah, to you. Do. And it's a forty-five dollar fee. We'll pay it. We have the, the funding in our that section of our it's budget. It's in July. Yeah, it's in July. It's a Monday and Tuesday. I want to say it's the last Monday and Tuesday of July. The 29th and thirtieth is ringing a bell. And it's at the Waquasset. Mm -hmm. um, so Where are you going? I'm going to go to at least one day. Yeah, because I think last year you sent the information to us. I didn't. I haven't heard anything. Matter of fact, somebody else I know. I, it just came out the because they're still asking for requests for proposals. I mean, oh. for people to Cause, present. There's actually a guy that I know. Well, one of the starters at the golf course that went mm -hmm. last year. He was telling me this about this about a month ago. Well, I just found out. <laughs> so I'll send you send you that. It should be good. That's all I got. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Second. Second. Aye. Aye.